Yo, what is up, business people? Good to freaking see you. It is Thursday. That means I'm trying to go live right now on. There we go. Got Instagram to work. All right. It's Thursday. You know what that means. It is booze and biz. Uh, we do this every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Basically, what happens is I go live on Facebook, Instagram, Twitch. Uh, hopefully, TikTok tonight. We'll see. And then I'm also on LinkedIn, which the, the viewership on LinkedIn is probably zero. I don't know. but um, And then uh, we talk about business and we drink some booze, dude. So tonight is going to be a good one. Um, you know, the intention of the show, I moved the show to Thursday with intentions of helping you guys have a nice excuse to crack a cold one, dude. So there you go. There you go. So for the next 90 minutes or so, uh, we're going to drink some booze, talk some biz on a very special episode episode tonight because I've got no guests, dude. I'm solo, solo night tonight. Um, so it's going to be a good time. I'm going to be answering live questions, of course, from the audience. I love doing that. Uh, I'm going to go deep on a few topics that I've kind of had on the top of my mind lately, or that I've seen kind of in discussions that I just want to kind of get my opinions and my insights out there on. Um, obviously I aim to be wildly entertaining and extremely educational. So hopefully I can, uh, so hopefully I can do that for you guys. So Without further ado, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is Booze and Biz. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. How many people we got live so far? Oh, we're doing good. We got 14 already. So, okay. Here we go. I'm going to give you guys... Um, uh, actually, no, I need, a, I need a giant favor from you guys before we kind of get into the, into, the, into the show. What's up, everybody? Thirsty Thursday. What up, David? Um, so I need a little bit of a favor from you guys. So I'm going to hit this button over here on my phone to go live on TikTok because I can't go live on TikTok through the computer. I'm worried that it's going to ruin the stream because I've got the T-Mobile, you know, that they dance and they've got the T-Mobile. Um, that's what I have. So here we go. Three, two, one. We're going live on TikTok. So if it ruins the stream, please tell me if it gets blurry, if it's nasty, if it's gross, please tell me. And then we are now officially live from my phone on TikTok. So we'll see how this goes on TikTok. Um, all right. We're doing good. We're doing good. Let me get caught back up. So if you are just coming in, um, obviously it's a live show. So for all of you that are either listening on the podcast or watching on the YouTube channel later, thank you. You guys are awesome. I hope you're drinking a beer right now, but if you're not, that's okay. Cause it could be nine in the morning there. So I hope your coffee is amazing. Um, for those of you that are just getting into the show now, we've got 20 people live. Um, we are, so this is booze and biz. I do this every Thursday. I usually have a guest on that'll be a badass entrepreneur, but tonight I don't have that because I didn't want that. I just wanted to go solo. I had a, a good time two weeks ago, kind of ending the show solo after I had Wes Bergman from the challenge on. And so I decided tonight I'm gonna do a whole entire solo episode, kind of see how it goes. So it's called booze and biz. We talk about biz while we drink booze so tonight what is the booze what is the booze i'm very i'm very uh i'm very plain tonight i'm very normal nick tonight i got my water beer my Michelob ultra and then i've just about killed my gas station tequila over the last two months or whatever you know i don't have a lot of tequila at the uh warehouse here so in my office so we do what we got to do all right so let's get the show off uh let's get the show off and rolling here so what I want to do, okay, now it's we're getting a little, we're getting a little choppy. All right, are we still good? We have all of one viewer on TikTok right now, so I am a okay to abandon it. But TikTok can pick up viewers as we go. Okay, we're gonna kill TikTok. TikTok, it was a good experiment. Oh, now people are joining. I don't know how to end it. Uh, oh, there we go. Bye. Bye. All right. Hopefully the blur goes away because while I'm start spitting opinions, I want to be make sure that I'm nice and clear and free and ready to rock and roll. Um, yeah. So if you guys are over on uh, Instagram, you Instagram folks are kind of new to the booze and biz world. So you guys can ask questions in the comments. Um, I have to see those on a different screen that for whatever reason, they don't roll up onto my screen over here. So I can't highlight you, but I will definitely, I will definitely uh, answer your questions. And then for those of you that are over on any other platform, uh, <laughs> Alicia said, but where's Michelle Nicole? I don't know. Call her, tell her to get on here. She won't come and do booze and visit me. Uh, but any of you guys that want to do, um, want to, want to drop a question or say what's up or whatever, shout out your company. You guys can do so. I can put you right on. So over on YouTube, Adair said, did Titan sponsor you? Uh, not really, not really. Um, sponsor is definitely a, a generous word there, but Titan inflatables did send me a combo. Um, Tony, 
the owner, Tony, called me on like March 8th, March 9th or something and said, I'm sending you a belated birthday gift. So I need your address. So I was like, oh, you don't have to do that. Thank you so much. Um, so I told him the address of the warehouse. And then lo and behold, what showed up was a absolutely badass. I believe it was called the Jurassic Rebound combo, but it's like a dinosaur combo that was fucking so cool, dude. So um, we have the video. The rough edits are done on the video now. I got to add the drone footage. We got to do some more stuff. So potentially next week. I'm out of town next week. But within the next week or two, you'll have the video up of me reviewing the Jurassic Rebound combo from Titan Inflatables. And it's really awesome. It's very well made. I was very, very impressed with everything on it. Even some little stuff that I may even educate you on that I know because I'm smart. No, I know because I have smart friends. But anyways, yeah, Titan Inflatables uh, sent me a combo for my birthday. And so it's badass. So that video will be out soon. So you guys can check that out. So yeah, much better. Sorry, TikTok. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen, dude. I was trying to get TikTok to go through this, but it wouldn't work. It's it's fine. It's fine. Um, Alicia, call Michelle and tell her to come on. I can send her the I can send her the stream so she can get on. I can send her the link if she wants to come on. I doubt she does, but okay. Anyways, let's get into the show. Let's get into the show. So first thing I wanted to talk about uh, is in relation to the inflatable business because it is the beginning of the season. Uh, the jump off here is in absolute full swing. Um, I know you guys up north are probably a little slower to thaw out, but uh, one of the things that I really wanted to kind of talk about is let's see. How do I want to start this? How do I want to start this? So I basically want to say that the bounce house business is, is yeah, let's back up. Start this off right. The bounce house business is an interesting business because it's made up of so many small, really, really, really small, right? I mean, in the world of inflatables, I tell people that how many inflatables the jump off has or how much revenue that we do. And they're like fucking floored, right? They're like, oh my God, you're fucking huge. I mean, in the grand scheme of business, the jump off is like this big. I mean, consider how large some corporations are out there, right? So, and, and and I'm kind of considered like a medium-sized inflatable business, right? There's obviously million dollar people out there, but um what 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 I'm kind of getting at though is that the inflatable business is made up of all of these little teeny tiny small businesses and then I don't know the number, right? I kind of made this up off the top of my head, but let's just say it's 90, let's have fun. 3, 93% of all of the businesses that are operating in the inflatable industry are side hustles, right? They're side hustles. They've got another job. They're a sheriff. They work at a plant. They're, you know, in the military. There's a million different, I, I talked to a gazillion different people and, and basically there's a million different jobs out there, but a lot of people have jobs and then start the inflatable business. That's, that's kind of the way it started for us. That's the way we started the jump off, right? My, Wife essentially went and bought two inflatables, and then I started renting them on the side uh, while I had a regular ass job. Right, where I, where I still worked at Journeys, um, and that's just what I thought it was. That's absolutely what I thought it was. I, I, um, yeah, I got you, Logan. I got you. I got you. I got you. Um, but, but that's what I thought it was. I thought it was a side hustle forever, right? I really did think it was a side hustle forever. Fast forward a little bit, so I acquired a company out. I bought a company out. They had nine units. And so that took us up to 12 total units. And I remember having a conversation with my wife. Like I remember it being in the kitchen. Um, I'm good at storytelling, but she always she always gives me shit that, that it's not exactly how it happened, but this is how I remember it. So I have this conversation with her where I told her, I said, I bet you I could scale this business to 100,000. I bet I could make $100,000 a year renting out inflatables because I know what I'm doing. Like, like I, I have some business acumen, right? And so she kind of scoffed and and kind of like uh, 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 laughed me. No, no, not laughed me off. It wasn't a funny thing. She wanted me to go get a real job, right? Like, so I'd quit my job. I was driving Uber and I was selling trash off the side of the road and renting out um, at this point in time, potentially our 12 inflatables. I don't remember, but uh, uh, probably our three inflatables. And uh, she wanted me to go get a regular ass job, right? So... And that was like not in the cards. I was not doing that. That was not happening. Um, I had left corporate world. I was definitely not considered an entrepreneur at that point because uh, it was right. I was driving and, and, and renting a bounce house a weekend, maybe. Um, but I remember telling her that I thought I could do $100,000 with this business. Um, and she was like, no, it's not. That's that's not what it is. It's a side hustle. It's like a cute, fun little thing on the weekend. It's 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 not that's not what this is. This isn't a real business. It's a freaking bounce house thing. And I remember kind of being like, 
a little bit frustrated, but also a little bit kind of like, you're probably right, whatever. Um, but that's kind of where I did start doing a little bit of, I'm not going to call it marketing, but a little bit of branding. I made some hats and some shirts. Like, I mean, I, I literally made like two shirts, right? Cause I was the only employee, but, um, um, but then fast forward, um, to kind of COVID and her salons shuts down. And the only, the only asset we had about this time in 2020 was the 12 bounce houses, right. And the jump, um, well, let's get lit shirt, uh, and the jump off. So that's when I went hard. I went serious. I got, I, you know, buckled down. I did everything I thought I needed to do to go get more business and by God, it worked. And I remember kind of having a conversation with my wife, Joe, this was joking at the time, right? Probably drinking a beer. And I said, like, I guess I'm going to be the bounce house guy. Like, I'm just going to go be the bounce house guy. Like, fuck it. Like, I'm having the time of my life because now I am kind of getting a taste of entrepreneurship. So, so one of the things I saw the other day, and I'll shout him out, was uh, by Ryan, Ryan posted, Ryan Johnson posted, you know, basically posed a question in, um, I think it was my Facebook group, maybe not, but in one of the Facebook groups of like why the why the business is closed so often, like why does a business start up seven units, you know, big trailer, enclosed trailer, even rolls all like they got all the good shit website and then they close down within you know twelve to eighteen months, and so I kind of gave it a little bit of thought and uh, I put my opinion in there, like I answered on the on the thread. I thought it was an amazing question to pose great conversation to have my opinion is that so many inflatable businesses close because they're opened as a side hustle they're opened as a side gig they're opened as extra money i'm gonna go print fucking money on the weekend the guys around me rent these water slides for 350 bucks 400 bucks whatever they go for while you're where you're at and you look at the business from the outside in and you're like these guys are making money hand over fist they only work two days a week Right. You guys know the cliches. If you own a decent sized inflatable business, you know, five units, probably even, you know that none of that is the case. OK, but from the outside in, that's what it looks like. So you go invest the money to start this business. And then lo and behold, oh, shit, it's a business and it's fucking hard and it's a lot of work. And so what you then have is this person invested all of this money. They kind of like, you know, consider it like poker, like they put all this money in. And so. They are then basically bluffing with their cards because they're not able to handle, they're not able to handle the workload. They're not able to handle the customers. Maybe they're bad with people. You gotta be fucking good with people to own a business because that's what it is. That's what the whole thing is, is people, right? So, so then as they go down that, that path, just not even that far, right? Even 12 months is not that long. Maybe they don't even make it that long. They are then faced with a choice, right? So Unlike poker, you can get some of your money back if you just sell all the shit. So do you want to sell all the shit and get your money back? And then you have a lower amount of money you started with, but hopefully you made some money, but a lower money uh, amount of money that you started with, but you're out from your bad decision, right? Which was to start this inflatable business. And basically the way I look at it is they're probably going to be weighing this amongst other factors, right? So I want to take my boat out, but God damn it, I've got three water slide rentals. Or I want to go to the soccer tournament this weekend, but God damn it, I got one on Friday, three on Saturday, and one on Sunday. What am I supposed to do, right? So then they start to cut corners. They drop everything off Friday or they drop everything off Thursday because that's their off day. They start giving a bad service to the people. They start doing everything lazy. You stop cleaning. Right. And you guys know, as soon as you, as soon as you kind of turn off the motivation or you turn off kind of the inspiration, the whole thing just will collapse. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you're training for a marathon or trying to start a bounce house business or scale a bounce house business. It will go to hell in a handbasket the second that you give up hope. Then it becomes nothing but a burden. And you'd rather have no rentals than any rentals. And so then you get out and you sell the business. So um, I'm going to take a drink of tequila here for two seconds. That's delicious. So I mixed I mixed tequila, and that's not very good tequila, but I mixed tequila with uh, Cherry Glacier Gatorade, and it's the, it's the most wonderful cocktail that's ever been invented. I really need to name it and spread it. It's so good. Okay, so anyway, back into our back into my rant here. So one of the things that I've really seen kind of come to the surface of lately and and brings me great joy and potentially great pride is the narrative has gotten a lot more positive around 
the bounce house industry, the narrative has gotten a lot less side hustly amongst the forums or amongst, right? We all live on the Facebook groups. So, so in those Facebook groups, the narrative has gotten a lot more positive and a lot less side hustly. Now, I don't say that to demean anybody that does it as a side hustle. If you do it as a side hustle and you do a good job of it, you're I like you're the real hero because this shit is hard and having a job sucks and is hard. And so like you're the real hero. OK, but the narrative, the, the point that I'm making is the narrative now has become I want to quit my job and do this full time amongst so many different people. Whereas when I came into the industry um, in basically 2019, right? But I, yeah, yeah, we'll just keep it at that. Keep it simple. So when I came into the industry in 2019, I didn't, I didn't talk to anybody. I'm just totally self-taught. I didn't know the Facebook groups even existed till I bought, uh, no, till I sold a bounce house to a very shady character. Um, and he's the one that told me about them. And then I kind of joined and was like, wow. Then I was able to start learning and like uh, uh, be a part of the community and and kind of see things for what they were a little bit more. Um, but I remember specifically and vividly going into the Facebook group and it's just negativity like crazy the whole time. So I'm doing a bad job getting you guys up on the screen here because I'm ranting. Um, it was just negativity the whole freaking time. Every every question that's asked is met with snarky bullshit, sarcasm. Run like I've just started the business. What's your first tip? Run away. Start something different. You're gonna die. Whatever. Um, there still is a little bit of that, but what I what is in there of that is generally very lighthearted. The industry. So this is where I'm gonna kind of uh, go on a little bit of a soapbox, and I, I don't mean this to be arrogant in any shape or form whatsoever. When I started my YouTube channel. I was very excited because I actually went on a vacation where I had no cell service. So like I posted a couple videos. I don't even remember how many and was watching the metrics very, very, very closely. and was like, holy shit, like people are subscribing, like, like it's working. I go, oh my God. And then I went on a vacation where I had literally no cell phone service um, up in Nevada. And when I came back, when we came back down the mountain and got cell phone service, I made sure my business was not on fire. And then I went in and looked at my YouTube metrics and I'd gone from like 300 subscribers to 1500 or something like that. I don't remember the numbers, but it was like, I remember I was right in the back of the truck with my wife. She was also in the back. And I remember being like, take a guess how many subscribers I have. She says some number and my number like tripled, quadrupled hers of what it actually was. And it was a very, it was a very uh, uh, special moment because I was able to, I was able to see that it was going to work, right? So then as I continued to make content and it started to go and people started to kind of recognize who I was, I went into the Facebook groups almost with a fury to try and kill the negativity as much as possible. We're humans. We're going to be negative. We have a we have an affinity for the negative. It's easier to hate something because it's just, it's just so convenient. It's just so easy. That's why the, all the news channels right, are always pushing fear and hate. That said, I was like, I'm going to do my absolute damnedest to, to stifle this and to really change the narrative and show people, right? So I think I went too far. So if you go watch any of my old videos, you're going to want to start a bounce house business because I tell you how easy it is, how great it is, how fun it is, right? there, I, I did a very poor job of being realistic because I was so optimistic. I was overcompensating for the rest of the industry's kind of narrative that uh, that I had encountered. <clears throat> so then when I started my Facebook group in 2023, like January, February, 2023, I went super hard in that group to kill and kick out people that were going to be negative. I literally attacked them when they would come in with their negative snarky bullshit. I would literally attack them in the comments and, and tell them I'm ashamed of them or, or they should be ashamed of themselves. Why would you want to come and spit? negativity at somebody or try and crush somebody's hopes and dreams like the name of the uh, uh the name of the facebook group was very intentional right bounce house business mentors like we're here to mentor to teach to 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 kind of uh, uh, uh bring up the next generation so they can do the shit right that we all screwed up because we didn't know what we were doing so uh yes that's very true too so i have and and that's a good point i'll, I'll get to that in just a second jay so um anyways 
Now you look around the landscape of the business and, and of course there's going to be negativity, right? The, it's human beings, but there's so much collaborative content out there. There's more people than ever making content on YouTube and the content on YouTube is meant to be useful. Like it's awesome to see all of that. <clears throat> and I don't want to take any credit for it. I just know that I set out to intentionally do as much of that as I possibly could. So I look around now and instead of that snarky bullshit, when we all get to collaborate, guess what's happens? The people that are meant to be successful or have the chance to be successful, but need a little boost, need a little, right? They need to stand on our shoulders. They're able to do that. And then the narrative changes from this is so hard. This is so miserable to this is great. I love it. I want to quit my job and I want to go be a, a inflatable entrepreneur 24 seven, 365. So it's just a really cool thing that I've uh, uh, kind of seen in the industry that I wanted to point out, wanted to give my opinions on, on kind of why this industry was kind of behind the time, so to speak, right? It's because it's made up of a bunch of freaking people doing side hustles. Uh, but now it's like, now we're out there, dude. Now we're out there. So yeah, it still exists. Chris says it still exists. Um, and he truly despises posting in the groups the most of the time. See, I, I actually love posting in the groups. Um, but I'm not obviously in there posting like, is it too windy to set up today? That that's that's gonna get uh that nah, I mean, I, I don't know. Off the top of my head, uh, I, I can't I can't think of like a, a post that would be garnering a ton of negativity other than like your your go-to's, right? Your insurance post, your omega post, uh, which I haven't seen in a while, by the way. But I love posting in the groups. You just got to remember like the platform that you're on. You know, you're on Facebook. It's not like you're not talking to Harvard grads or something like you know, it's Facebook. Like you're talking to regular ass people that do this kind of the same shit you do. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So Jordan said people can't dedicate the weekends off. <clears throat> and one of your biggest hurdles is finding good help. Yeah. So that's what people think like, Oh, I can just do this on the weekends and they try to outsmart it. They're going to drop everything on Friday, pick everything on whatever price Sunday, um, which is normal, right? We offer that service now too, but, but it's just, like, it doesn't, you, you can't outsmart it. Like your weekend is spent on this shit. Like that's just, that is what it is. And the phone rings and the blower blower broke and the, right. It is what it is. Uh, you, but you can't find good help. Um, that my friend, I've got, I've got, uh, I, I, I probably have an absolute, you know, encyclopedia of things I could tell you, but, um, I'm going to, I'm, I'll spit that. I'll spit this opinion straight at your face. If you can't find good help, it's a you problem. Now I say that from the bottom of my heart, I say that with absolute empathy and no negativity, no blaming at all whatsoever. Um, but you got to sell the dream, bro. You've got to sell the vision. That's a better way to put that. You've got to sell the vision. If you want to staff your company with great people, you've got to kind of reverse engineer people. What do people want to do nowadays, especially the younger generation, right? You can bitch and you can moan and you can whine that the younger generation is this, that, or whatever, but it doesn't fucking matter. doesn't matter. You're the old one. They're the young one. Like they're going to win. <laughs> they're going to win. So, so you have two options. You can be angry and complain, or you can kind of, you know, do your best to reverse engineer it. So think about what the younger generation wants to do. What are they exposed to? YouTube like crazy full of people that play video games and make millions of dollars. Okay. Bunch of gurus probably selling bullshit courses. I don't know. That might, that might make me look a little bit old. I don't know if courses are still a relevant thing, but right. Bunch of gurus selling a bunch of bullshit that you can start this business for this, that, whatever, right. They want to be an entrepreneur. They want to be a YouTuber. They want to be an entrepreneur. So now, yes, I have the luxury of being both, right? I have the luxury of being both. Every, so I watch a lot of sports TV. I don't watch it. It just plays on that TV while I work because listening to music gets old, right? Because the, the same music repeats. So they keep talking about new things on the, the, the sports shows that I watch. All the shows on Fox sports are my favorite ones. And, um, they talk all day long about sports and I listen to it. And, uh, one of the things that kind of becomes very apparent is, uh, the number, the number of podcasts out there is insane i swear to god every single nba player has a fucking podcast it's crazy talk it is absolute crazy talk and now the nfl players every other one's got a podcast right so what are the young kids accustomed to youtubers podcasts 
and entrepreneurs. Guess what they want to be? One of those three things. Ask any of them. Go to college campus and ask any of them what they want to do. They want to be one of those three things unless they're there. They're put on this earth to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a computer programmer, right? There are other professions that got to go to a college. Reverse engineer that, bro. You sell the vision. You sell the vision. You got it? I don't know. It's stuck. But but yeah. Th so anyways, that's that's what you got to do, bro. That's what you got to do. You got to sell the dream and reverse engineer the vision. Let's see. Okay. Somebody asked, what up, Paul? Yes, happy to see the season starting too. Yeah, we booked. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Paul is the owner of Foam Daddy. I've got a Foam Daddy lanyard. Oh, it's down there. But I got Foam Daddy behind me. I, I got him repping behind me. Um, but yeah, Paul is the owner of Foam Daddy. Yeah, so so Paul, we booked um, last weekend. We had at, at my new licensed location in Baton Rouge a six, four, four, four hour party, I think, at some crazy bar. The literally the name of the party that that Trevor's Trevor's business. Okay, so he owns Baton Rouge, jump off Baton Rouge. But uh he uses my equipment. So he used my foam cannon. But uh he had a foam party at a bar and it was literally called Twerk Down 2024. <laughs> twerk down shooting foam on gals twerking like crazy. So it was very reminiscent of the music video. It was it was kind of poetic in a way when I woke up the next morning and, and got the videos from Trevor. Uh, but then today I booked a school for a foam party for three hours. And then I've got another beast of a party that I booked at a, a two day event at a school. And then there was another bar that had text that Cassie was texting today that wanted foam. So I don't know if I broke into the bar scene or what, but yeah, season starting up is going to be badass. Yeah. For those of you that are, uh, old watchers or old listeners of booze and biz from last last year i switched the show there's no zoom anymore there's no zoom mosh pit full of madness um it got too much for me i was not a very good host with uh, uh i'm great like this right like this i'm good to go you start having people draw dicks on my screen and then the comments are going crazy with fake names. I got to let everybody in the room. It was not. It was just not conducive to a good show. Maybe it was enjoyable on your guys' end. It was not a sustainable show. It was not a sustainable show at all whatsoever because uh, it almost caused anxiety for me. And it was like, not that I want to say I dreaded it, but okay, cool. All right, all right. I'm going to bring somebody on. But yeah, not to say that I was dreading those shows, but they were just... They were just a little bit too much for me, dude. It was like too much. Um, and I did them. At, they would start at seven o'clock at night and then they would be shot at my house and then do the Zoom mosh pit. It would just turn into an absolute drunken shit fest, which was me getting drunk because like people were talking about like, right? And the show would get derailed. I'd be talking about something cool and then they'd people would be like, what should I charge for my popcorn machine? I don't fucking know, bro. Go look at the companies near you. I don't, how the fuck should I know? So anyways, uh, I don't do it on um, I don't do it on Zoom anymore. I do it on I do it on uh, Streamyard. This is Streamyard, so I can control everything, and then I can uh, pop you guys on screen like this. So this is Emily Smith from Sun Fun Inflatables. She says, "Hey, you guys, go check out Sun Fun Inflatables." Uh, let's see. Jared Lambert said he worked at a carpet mill when he started. I don't even know what that is. Sounds like it makes carpet, but yeah, that's got to be hard as fuck. You know what I mean? Oh, Jay's got a long comment. I'm not going to be able to read it all. Ooh, sorry. Misery loves company. Yes. Yes. Misery does love company. You got to avoid it. Uh, trying to figure out doing Xmas slides. Good for you guys. So um, I've got another topic, but I'm going to see if I'm going to see if my guest is going to come on before I start my next topic. So if you guys want to do Christmas lights, check this out. Check this out. Here you go. This is this year's stops for Christmas light training. Take notes, my friends. So on September 2nd, we are going to have, so Let's Get Lit Supply is going to have a Christmas light training in Las Vegas. That's a Monday. If you want to come the Friday prior and drink some tequila with me and my wife, you're more than invited. I don't know where it's going to be at yet, the training. I don't know where we're going to be staying yet. Uh, I would imagine the strip. I haven't been to Vegas since I was 21. No, 20. I went when I was like 25, 26. Um, but yeah, we're going to be in Vegas. That's a Monday planned on purpose. So I can go party the weekend before. And I would love to have you guys come out and party with me. Then we fly across the country. We go to Chicago on the fourth. 
Then we fly all the way down and go to Orlando on the 6th of September. Then we take a break and breathe and try and regain our lives and our voices. Then on the 17th, we're in Dallas. That stop is at the Big and Bright Inflatables headquarters, which is also the Let's Get Lit Supply headquarters. It's both. So you can see a little bit of behind the scenes of um, how Matt operates his inflatable business, Big and Bright. See all the dollies and the blowers and, of course, the inflatables. Um, he'll have inflatables blown up for you to check out, right? Because most people that come to these trainings are inflatable people. But yeah, so we'll be in Dallas on the 17th. And then the 19th on uh, September, we're thinking Houston. Right now, it's kind of the placeholder, but we may end up going to here. We may end up going to New Orleans. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, you guys can come and uh, learn the learn the hustle. All right, here my guest is here. So here we go. Surprise guest crashing the party. Bridget <laughs> from Jump Orange. Hi, everybody. What up, Bridget? Oh, here, here. Let me get my – I got mine right here. Thanks for letting me join. Oh. Unexpected, but exciting. I love it. Yeah, you've got – well, you got – you know, I don't – it's already been announced, but you got something to plug, huh? Yep, something big happening. I am in Florida right now, outside of Orlando in Castleberry, and we are opening our new Florida store for Jump Orange. So tomorrow – we are having a grand opening starting at 10 a.m. We're going to have keynote speakers. We're going to have Jana Thompson, Ismael Cardenas, uh, Mark Good, and Alejo Lopez. We're going to have donuts and coffee for everybody, plenty of time to mingle with other people in the industry. Uh, we're going to have catered lunch and a ribbon cutting, live music. And then the best part, what do you think the best part is, Nick? Uh, I don't know. You're putting me on the spot. Uh, inflatables? The sale. The sale. <laughs> no, the sale, the sale, the sale. So yeah, we're going to have an exclusive in-store sale. Um, so right now online, 30% off everything, but, um, in-store 35% off. So that's pretty good. Then, yeah. Is um, it gem? Mem is it gem members only or is that everybody? So everybody, if you come and shop at the store, yeah, you can take it home the same day. Um, it is limited to our in-store stock. So if you go to jumporange.com and you go to the in-stock tab, there's a Florida uh, store tab that'll show you everything. So if you want to pre-shop it and you can even place an order in advance with one of our sales reps, just call us or send us an email tonight and we'll put those items aside for you. That's legit. I may have to freaking Venmo Jana or something or, or Mark. <laughs> yeah, we have we have another deal, but I don't think I can say it. But know that there's an even bigger offer. <laughs> if if you you're attend. there. Yeah. I had to go to Hawaii. Why did I have to go to Hawaii? I know. I hope you have the best time, though. It sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah well, I'm excited to go. It's, it'll be fun. Like, uh, uh, like the whole family's going. Like the kids will be there, too. So it's like. You know, we take them, you know, we just, we took them to the beach in Florida for Easter. We took them to Mexico last year. I'm like, what are you, what, what are you guys going to come along for the ride? The whole, like always like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have a five-year-old and I take them everywhere. So mm -hmm. um, all right, let me ask questions. I'm curious. Uh, Cause this is the first I've like actually spoken to you about the warehouse. So normally you guys are out of California, right? Correct. We are in Santa Fe Springs, which is like right outside of LA. All right. So if you're in Florida and you're like, I want to buy a jump orange, you know, water slide, it's like a zillion dollars to ship. So, so, all right. Am I right? Am I on the right track here? So you're like, well, so, let's go open like, Florida. Shipping is five ninety five, just flat rate, mm -hmm. no matter what you order. That's one thing that we try to offer people, but for just a hundred dollars more, you can get the gem club membership, which has free shipping for a year. So, oh, right. and then 15% off. So usually on that first order, you're saving more than you're spending. I've done the math. Like if you just got a bounce house with a gem membership, it's still cheaper than without and paying shipping. But the real benefit of the store, one, we're going to have inflatables on display. So you're going right. to see at least six inflatables set up tomorrow in our parking lot. So you can touch it, feel it, like really see the quality, kind of like IAPA. Um, and then being able to get them immediately, right? Like you're not having to wait for the shipping company. There's no lag time on it. Like you get a booking next weekend and you need something, call us up and come down to the showroom and pick it up. Um, That's so cool. You, so it's then, in Orlando area? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. So like maybe 15 minutes from downtown Orlando. So not okay. I drive, not like that kind of touristy, busy area, but more where like the locals reside. That's yeah. cool. So, so can we, uh, uh, it's probably not announced, right? Or probably announced tomorrow for IAPA, IAPA gatherings. I, yes, I'm already like, we are going to have the party here for sure. Like definitely this place, I can't show you the whole thing right now. Cause we're trying to keep it low, mm. you know, on the DL for now, but it is incredible. Like I can tell you, Nick, nobody else in the industry is doing what we're doing. A hundred percent. So you're literally there right now. I'm here right now. <laughs> no shit. That's so cool. That is yeah. so cool. This is our like photo op for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so tomorrow uh, for Logan, tomorrow is the grand opening for Jump Orange. So Friday, April 12th, 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. Uh, feel free to stop by anytime during those hours. And then uh, typically, though, we're going to be open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 5.30. So if you can't make it for the grand opening, come another time. Like, we would love to have you. The way we have it set up, this is a place to, like, come, hang out talk shop uh we plan on doing seminars regularly here so we'll have speakers talking about the business so nick whenever you're ready to come to florida <laughs> yeah because i was talking to so the other day i was on a run and i was like just thinking and i'm like man i really like making videos like like i love being an entrepreneur too but i'm like i just want to make more videos and i was thinking i was like dude i should just go fly like every two or three weeks just go fly to a new freaking place and go do a video like at a right whether i'm at a rental company or i'm at a manufacturer whatever just go all over the place uh and so then now you're saying that i'm like dude like let's That's go where I, i'm at i want to go to all my customers like i'm like i want to go to north carolina i want to go to south carolina yes. <laughs> like, Shout out to Tanya and Kevin if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like, how fun would that be to like go, you know, and then like I would learn so much and be able to like teach everybody else so much because I go, you know, like when I went to Bounce House Atlanta for the first time in October and like got to see all the stuff that like how they keep organized, like I stole like three things. I'm like, oh, this is fucking so easy and so brilliant. If I just steal it and bring it back, like, you know, if you go around and do all the best practices, like it would be so cool. Like I would say one of the best things too about the event tomorrow and even you get this at IAPA is that there's going to be so many people in the industry here to like mm -hmm. talk to, to network with, to learn from. I think that's something that like we're trying to provide that's different is the educational aspect, the co community aspect, um, that like next level of business, right? Kind of like what you're doing with your business. Mm -hmm. You're actually reaching out connecting the community and building the industry to be better. Yeah, that's one of the things kind of like, as my content kind of started to evolve, I was like, I don't know how many like, how to roll a blankety blank videos I, you know, can do. Uh, I love inflatables. And I love this industry. But like, my passion is like, actual like business level, like, high end stuff. So that's kind of what I've been like, let me see if I can just teach some hiring stuff, teach some, you know, whatever, I'm not a good accountant. But you know th those kind of things to the to the people of the industry and see what will happen and like it was scary at first i'm like what if everybody's like shut up dude just talk about how to roll a combo uh but it's gone it's gone well right it's gone pretty good so so it's been fun so i think, I, I definitely. think yeah, hey, it moves I, the the industry in the right direction Ed edgar i'm coming to houston for sure you know <laughs> it and same nikki i'm definitely gonna come to Toledo. that's amazing i would love to <laughs> yeah hell yeah yeah, Kevin yeah. told me I got to get a new travel card. So um, <laughs> next week, there's no booze and biz because I'm in Hawaii. But the week after that, I got Kevin on to talk about all of his crazy credit card points. and. Oh, I saw his craziness. post about that. And I was like, wait a minute. I am doing my travel visa wrong. Like, I need to get mm -hmm. on <laughs> Kevin's tip about that. Yeah, so he'll be on next in two weeks from today. Just all the knowledge about all the credit cards and the points and the whatever. Oh man. Yes. I even actually, it's funny. Cause after seeing Kevin's post, I did call my credit card. I'm like, so can I cash these out too? Like, what are my options here? Cause I'm hearing there's a lot more that you can do with these points. <laughs> That's so funny. It's, uh, it's like stuff like that, that like the more I talk to people in the industry and learn from them, it's so applicable to so many businesses too. Right? Like yeah. not just pretty rentals. Yeah. Because I mean, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the people are getting into Christmas lighting as I've been talking about that. And that is 
not a capital intensive business, but you got to spend, I mean, it depends on how big you get, but you got to spend 10, 20, 30 grand a year, every year on lights, you know, on your supplies. And so it's like, you can yep. put that on a credit card and get all those points. Like it's Ooh. a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, he said, don't, don't be afraid to DM him with questions. So you can, oh, you can cool send your question later. Okay. Well, so, um, Logan said, what are your most popular units? Yeah. So definitely the most popular of all time is the melting Arctic combo. It's blue and yellow with just a touch of red. So not like so primary basic. Um, it's got the marble vinyl, so it's more like upscale. It looks really great. Just works well for so many parties. Um, and then we're going to have some of our like showstoppers. So like the thunder with the lightning bolts, it's purple. We have, um, the electric, which is the teal one with the jellyfish on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have the mysterious. Okay. The mysterious got people talking when we released that at IAPA two years ago, everybody that got that one is doing so well with it. Like what is it? What's the, what's the design that's on it? It looks like Dr. Seuss. It's like the, almost like it reminds me of like the snuffle up uh, the red. It's got like red squirrely things. On yes. It? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Like yellow tips. And it's, it's, uh, some people have, like themed it Barbie and stuff, but mm. it's been renting really well for people. And then we'll have classics like the Cali Palms, the Dolphin. There might be some, again, special deals. So, uh -huh. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so and we've got combos here. We've got water slides. We do have some of our obstacle courses, uh, like the Rainbow 40 Foot and the Shadow. Um, and then we have our new basketball tournament game. So that's the one that three players can play. We had it at IAPA. It's yes. massive. So like when you're going to those school events um, or the bigger events where you want multiplayer games, that one is great for that. That's um, super cool. Dual so, lanes? Yeah. So we came out with a lot of great dual lanes this past year for 2024. So we have the level up dual lane. Um, we have a, it's like called the happy face one. It's got like the emojis on it in a dual lane. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also, a cool one that we made recently was like, we actually made an electric custom dual lane for someone. So, um, if you go to our website and hit categories, you can hit dual lane slides and see all of them. We've got about five new ones right now. Nice. Uh, but any feedback you guys have, please let us know because it really does affect what we design for the following season. So if you're like, I want more of the dual lanes, like, let us know, did you like this, uh, the stair in the center, like we put the stair in the center with the slides on the side. Some people like the stair on the side. So let us know that feedback really makes a big difference. Like I saw you guys posted one that was like the, I think it was the level up, I, I think. But anyways, it was dual lane slide with the slip and slides coming off of it. And I was like, badass. And I clicked it and I'm like, oh fuck, dude, it's a center climb. Like that's two slip and slides that yes. you got to hook to it, which is three yep. units, which is badass, right? And I would charge accordingly. But if you do the side climb, which, and this is not an industry-wide thing. This is just a Nick thing. I don't like center climbs. I don't have a reason. I don't mm -hmm. have a, any rhyme or reason at all. I, I like it, the stairs on this side and then the two slides next to each other. But then you can make the dual lane where it's one dual lane slip and slide that hooks to it. And so then it's just two pieces. Love those. Love those. We have. Yeah, I think we're thinking like when you put it on the side, if there's a bunch of kids like going up, is it going to affect the weight? You know, like if there's a bunch of people on one side. Um, and then, of course, just the wow factor. Like if you guys go to Bridget Jump Orange on Facebook, <laughs> the first, um, you'll see I recently reposted uh, Tanya Williamson's photo of the level up dual lane with both slip and slides attached. I mean, it's amazing. Like, oh, I, I oh it looked incredible. And it looked like kind of like at first I was like, oh, my God. Then I looked, I'm like, whoa, whoa, three units. And then I kept looking at it. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is something that you buy like you're a, a big established company. You need a wow factor. And yes. then you can post like the wow factor of the three units with the two slip and slide. Like, it's just insane. I was like, yeah, I would totally freaking buy that because it's, it's that piece you can put on your freaking homepage. It's going to get you the big events. It's going to get you booked for right. like the, the large scale upscale events. And then, yeah, the wow factor of it. And actually Tanya was saying that it wasn't bad to set up at all. So she, yeah, I'm you know, sure it's, 
15 ounce vinyl. We don't use 18. So we get a much lighter unit with that. And then of course, having two uh, slip and slides plus the slide. Now you're looking at potentially three rentals out of it or one mm -hmm. large ticket rental out of it. So there's a lot of flexibility with that. And then of course the dual lane, if it's the winter time, you can just remove the pool completely. It is detachable. And then just you don't even need to add any landing pad to it. It right. actually is extended at the end, so it'll slow them down before they hit the ground if they're using it dry. Super so, cool, dude. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. All right. So tomorrow, what time tomorrow and tomorrow, where? Tomorrow, 10 a.m. Uh, till 3. And again, we're going to have keynote speakers. We're going to have a ribbon cutting ceremony. We'll have donuts and coffee. We'll have lunch for you all. And then exclusive in-store sales. 35% off everything in stock. Um, and you can pick it up the same day, start making money off of it next weekend. That's so cool. That's so cool. If you want to get on stage and FaceTime me, and I, I'll say hi to the crowd. That's a great <laughs> idea. I would love that. It's I'll be funny. here in my Somebody office lonely me. all day long. They were like, wait, so is Nick going to like live stream for the seminar? I was like, I didn't even think of that, but genius. I could be like, hey, Nick, I know you're in Hawaii or traveling, but can you jump on real quick? No, I'm here. I'll be in my office tomorrow. We don't leave till Saturday oh, morning. Man. Have yeah, to we, do leave, it. we leave Saturday, I think, at like 630 in the morning or something miserable. Oh, So I'll be here tomorrow. I've got two deliveries coming tomorrow. Other than that, normal work day. So I'm okay. I'll, I'll message down. you. We'll hop on StreamYard and I'll stream you real quick. Say hi to everybody. Yes, I'm very down for it. Yeah. Well, anybody else have any questions? Freddie's like, what's for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue. <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm really good. Good stuff, though. Smoking donuts. They're great. They're local. I'm a, I'm Orlando local, Nick. I don't know if you knew that about me. So I know. I, all I think. Stuff. Yeah, I think I did. I think I did know that. I think I did because when we did the podcast, I remember you were on East Coast time. Yeah. So this this feels full circle for me because the backdrop behind me actually was at IAPA in 2017, the first time I worked for Jump Orange. So to be here for this new store opening that is really going to change the direction of the industry and to have the same like backdrop that I had from day one, I'm just like, wow, ah, this is really cool. <laughs> so freaking cool i'm massively jealous that i can't be there in person well you're welcome for, anytime literally for the hawaii anytime. trip yeah, yeah yeah we'll have to we'll plan something the red carpet we'll open the door oh i didn't tell you too we have a podcast studio oh so, really yes we built a podcast studio so again doing it Magic. totally different from the rest of the industry um so i would love for you to you know when you're out here to film a podcast with me we already yeah, have we'll be a couple we'll so September 6th, let me look at the calendar because September 6th is the Christmas like training that like we literally will, literally will be in Orlando. No, you're having that here. Mm -hmm. We're doing a stop. September so we're doing 6th? five. We're doing five of them this year. Vegas, Chicago, Orlando, Dallas and Houston. Amazing. And so that is what did I say it was the sixth. I think it's a Friday. Is it one day or is it a multi-day event? It's one day. So yeah, so we do that week is like death week because we do vegas monday chicago wednesday orlando friday oh and my then God. the vegas is on monday so i'm like i did that on purpose dude i'm going to vegas for the weekend prior come on um for the weekend but, but we can yeah so we're here so i'll we'll, we'll land on thursday if i'm not dead i would love to come by but if i'm dead we got to do the training on friday and then I probably wouldn't fly out till Saturday. But are you guys open on the weekend or no? I mean, yeah, we'll open for you. Like, I mean, let me know. Yeah. So we are right now, for anybody who's curious, like let's say you guys can't come here Monday through Friday. We can do in-store pickup Saturday, Sunday from 9 to 11 with notice. So if anybody is – if the weekend's your only availability, we will work with your schedule. So same with you, Nick. I can definitely either do like a Friday night thing or – Saturday morning before you fly out. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. We'll have to figure it out. I, I almost am like, I almost would rather like do a separate trip now that I'm like looking at the week on the calendar. I'm like, oh, yeah, God. totally. And it's worth it. Like, I think it's what we have going on here is definitely worth spending more than a couple hours to check out and be right. a part of it. That's and if not, definitely Ayapa for sure. That's a great time frame too. 
for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll get with you. We'll have to figure something out because I would love to because the flight from here to Orlando is like a hundred dollars. Like, right? It's nothing. Yeah, yeah, super chill. You're not that far at all. Word. I'm actually going to Vegas at the end of the month too. Oh, oh this I'm, month though, yeah. I haven't been got, forever. I'm very got, excited. Oh, if anybody's out there in Vegas, hit me up. Let me know where to go. Or if you want me to come to your warehouse, let me know. I'm at, it's like a vacation, but I'm so down. Like I've started thinking about that, Nick. I'm like, I need to turn my vacations into time to get more content. Like, so I can actually totally. see more people's businesses across the country. Like I was saying, you know, I really want to see the different ways of doing it. Cause even just talking to people about Florida, it's all water slides here, you right, know, right. That's number one, it's gotta be wet. And it's also like 12, 12 months out of the year totally different versus like what Ismail is doing in California, you know? Yeah. California is um, like bounce house, bounce house, bounce house, bounce yeah. house. So he's saying he only does dry combo. So totally different, but I love to learn from what each area is doing. Um, and I think what Chicago is like a two or three month season. Oh God, it's gotta be so short. And what's crazy is there's business like, like Nick's business there is huge. I'm like, bro, how, when are you even open? I'm so confused. Yeah. I mean, even like busy B in Boston, right? Like they can't have like a year round right. thing, but I mean, he's like booming. He's doing great. So, I mean, sometimes you just get it all in right then. Yeah. But then you're in those, that, but I've, I've, I've said that too, where I'm like, I've got the right climate here, but I live in like this little teeny, like it's rural. Like the people don't even want to, the legislatures don't even want to make the road wider than one lane. Cause they're worried people will move here if we widen our roads. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, dude, I had to be in the rural zone, like with no big city. Like I'm out here hustling my face off to, you know, get to a quarter of a million. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, the the big cities. I'm like, dude, I'm so jealous. One uh, of these days. One of these well, days. I heard, I heard that you might be heading to a big city soon. So Yeah, it's it's on the table. It's on the table. But I it, dude, I was talking to my wife about it the other day. I'm like it feels to me like it's like four years away, dude. Like, like, let me not, let me not like get plans in place here. You know? Well, you've got a lot of other things too, right? So it's not just rentals for you, which I think is something like super inspiring is like you start out with the rentals and that helps you grow into other businesses, whether it is concessions and tables or like you, like you actually have products for the industry, which is amazing. The rolling straps and the cleaning products and, you're, you're branching out into more and more things. And then you have Rays. Rays. Yeah, that's. Rays. It, we, I did a post. Um, I think I put the post just in my Facebook group, but it like went wild. And so uh, poor Brooke, I don't know if Brooke's watching, but uh, poor Brooke, she, I text her. I was like, this, this, like whatever, check up on this guy. And she's like, oh my God. I'm like, no rush, no rush, no rush, no rush. She's like, I've got this, 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 this. All these conversations go through all these different people. All these people messaging the page. Wow. Like, yeah. Yes. Blow them up. Like, get more staff and grow it, you know? Yeah, we've got uh, – we have, we have like, an army of staff. Like, right? They're all 1099. Oh, they work cool. From, they work remote. <clears throat> so we typically end up hiring – like, I literally think every single rep we have right now, off the top of my head, every rep we have right now is the wife of the bounce house company right and they have three or five or eight or 12 units or whatever and so the wife does all the customer service and then the husband does the the deliveries and the pickups and so they're like yeah like i already talked to all my customers like why don't i just talk to somebody else's customers too and so i i literally think every rep we have is a woman who is uh the wife of no we have one that's a uh, that's a legit va we have one i think i think brooke got her a uh, an account but yeah it's it's crazy like because awesome. i'm like yeah come make some extra money on the side you're you talk to bounce house customers it's not hard yeah easy easy yeah. money work from home flexible schedule yeah Don't brooke, worry, David. Runs, <laughs> brooke runs david's brooke runs david's booking so he's like he's getting nervous right now don't worry david your 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 priority number one, and then growing the business is always priority number two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, awesome. all right. thanks so much, Nick. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Thanks everybody for watching too. Yes, heck um, yeah! Thanks for I stopping run. by. I got a lot of stuff to to get ready for tomorrow, but I hope to see you all there. Um, 
I will actually give Nick a link if you want to sign up or and a flyer so he can post it if you want to get the address and the info. Uh, but don't worry about it. Just show up. Like literally just come. We would love to have everybody and anybody. So yeah, I'll probably be on for I'll, I'll be on for a little bit longer. So if you want to post it in the Facebook comments, oh yeah, that way everybody can see it. Um, I can't do cool things like pinning from here because I'm on StreamYard, but but uh, yeah, yeah, post it in the Facebook comments so that everybody can see it. They can sign up and they can come and check you guys out. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Bridget. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, let's see. I got to push the right button. All right. There we go. <laughs> we, that was kind of a, a, a sloppy goodbye, but that was all good. That was all good. All right. I would like to answer some questions. If you guys have questions. Uh, there was a couple over in Instagram, so I'm going to try and jump on the Instagram questions. Let me get back over here. Uh, there might only be one on Instagram. Instagram, if you guys have questions, ask your questions. So the only one I see over here was, where'd it go? Okay, so it's from uh, Gus Andres. There you go. I'm fancy. I rolled the R. Gus Andres said, "Are you? do you agree cleaning on pickup? So that's a good question. So cleaning on pickup. So um, I'm going to kind of, I'll run the gambit of my opinion on this whole thing. So if you're a small company, you have five units, you know, yeah. And you're doing it yourself. Yeah. Hell yeah. Clean them on pickup. Um, it is slightly awkward. It was not something I loved to do because it's slightly awkward, like vacuuming out the combo in the backyard. But when you're a solo, when you're a solo operator, you just knock out, like you don't have to roll it, go home, unroll it clean it and re-roll it like you can knock it all out and kind of uh, uh just consolidate your whole week just to boom, just the weekend i'm a big fan of that you start to get to scale that stops that stops being the way to operate right so once you start to get to scale you're better off to hire somebody to come and help you clean a and or maybe just do the cleaning so you can go work on the business that's for combos and bounce houses now for water slides yeah i'm a big fan of clean the water slides on site just send a spray bottle in the truck full of cleaner. Uh, if you guys want to get my cleaner, it's called the wash off. I know super, super original, right? The jump off the wash off, but you guys can get it at the jump off store.com. It's great. It's all organic. It smells wonderful. It's great stuff, but yeah, you just put it into a spray bottle, diluted, diluted, but you put it into a spray bottle and then you can clean on site. Boom. You're good to go with water slides. Yeah. You can just go hit the traffic areas, right? Up, the slide, the landing, or up the stairs, landing, down the slide, and in the pool, and then everything else, you can just towel it off. I mean, it's soaking freaking wet. So you can get all the rest of the areas, you know, the mud and dirt that's on the, you know, where the kids get in, whatever. Yeah, wipe the slides down. To blow up and clean every single water slide and combo during the summer is an absolute death march, especially down here where it'll be 95 degrees, but the heat index We'll, we'll, we'll say it's 110 because of the humidity, but it feels like you're in hell's sauna. So it's kind of like, well, let's do this the easy way. So yes, we wipe down all of our water slides. We pick those up and we clean them at pickup. Yes, yes, yes. Um, let's see. CD Pena. Pena? Pena? CD Pena? I know the name. I've interacted with you for before. I know this, but asks, buy a company or start from scratch. That's a good conundrum to get yourself into. Very situational. It, it depends on the company. So one of the things that happens with inflatable companies as they scale, right? They get to, let's say, 50, 60, 70 units. They a lot of times become overpriced. The, the operator will overprice them. So there was, a, there was one for sale in the Baton Rouge area maybe a year ago or so. And yeah, I think it was around that, like 50, 60 units, something like that. And the guy wanted like 350K for it. And so I was like, eh, I'll, I'll go check your website. I'll check it out and see. And so then I wouldn't go, you know, go look at all the inventory and see what's up. And then I made him an offer of like 125, 150. I believe, I believe that situation, I actually asked for a little bit of help on valuing the business from Mark Good. And we both came up with the very similar number, like around that 125, 150 number. So I think I rounded up. I offered him 175 and he like kind of laughed at me. He's like, that's literally half of what I'm asking. And like my, re my rebuttal was cool, but that's what the business is worth. So that's what I'm willing to offer. Uh, needless to say, I didn't buy it. He did go with me. I'd have no idea what happened to it. Um, but if you can start a business, or I'm sorry, if you can buy an established business that is well ran has good units 
and is appropriately priced, I'm all about that. All about that because you kind of instantly gobble up a lot of the market share that that company already has. Now, here's the trick with valuing the company. Doesn't really matter, in my opinion. The company is worth what the inventory is worth, right? And if they're going to throw in, you know, electric dollies, <clears throat> trailers, trucks, like that all needs to be, that all needs to be taken into account when it comes to valuation of the business, but it doesn't matter. The business is worth what the inventory is worth. The reason I say that is because if you were to just go start a company with the same inventory size, you would essentially, it would take you a couple years, but you would essentially be that size in a, a relatively short amount of time with a brand new company versus buying this established one. Now, do you want to throw on a few thousand dollars for the SEO that the website has? Do you want to throw on a couple thousand dollars for the schools that they tend to rebook every year, the churches they tend to rebook every year, the festivals that they tend to rebook every year, then yes, I would agree with that. But it's not going to be some disproportionate amount of money you're adding on to the cost of the business above what the inventory is worth. The rare occasion would be if you're buying a massively established business that is doing a ton of money. So, so Jump Guy in Chicago, Bounce House Atlanta, Jump Tastic, Busy B, like those companies are going to be worth more than the inventory's worth because of what the of what the operator has turned them into, right? It almost becomes kind of like a a, a more traditional business acquisition when their companies are doing millions of dollars. That's a it's a whole different spectrum than what I'm talking about. You're talking about buying out a 12 unit company. The company the the, the price of that company is the price of the 12 units appropriately priced for how used they are. You know what I mean? Now, if you have a company that's that's selling, that's been around for 30 years, but they've ran it shitty, they have a three-star rating on Google, their inventory is all old and beat up, their website sucks and is built on Wix, see where I'm going? That gets into a different era where you don't really want to evaluate the business on the revenue or the profit because it's not a healthy business. That business is worth what the inventory is worth. The other random, probably never going to happen really caveat would be if you go to buy the jump off. Like, so if you came to me and wanted to buy the jump off from me, it has its own different identity nationwide. Like it has brand recognition from coast to coast. Like the jump off is well known because of what I do. So my brand would be worth more than what my inventory is worth because of what I have built it into. However, Another caveat to the caveat, if you're buying it locally, that brand recognition wouldn't matter. Or to say this differently, that you don't have any vested interest to buy my business if you're local to me because of what I have nationally. Like there's no, it, make, it would make little to no sense because you'd be wasting all the potential that could be, uh, that, that that's out there that you could get with a national brand recognition, right? So if I were to ever sell the jump off, which no, I don't plan on it, but if I were to ever sell the jump off, it would be best suited to sell it to somebody that can do something with it nationwide. Like somebody that has like an entrepreneur that has humongous aspirations of opening across the country of licensing of franchising, that kind of thing. But when it comes to buying out of business, if you can do it at the correct price, I'm all for it. Almost always, almost always, because it almost always will be a good head start for you to to kind of get into the business um let's see what other questions we got uh the facebook chat has been super busy so i'm not gonna be able to scroll through and find any questions in any good amount of time there um so let's go to this one this is a generator one okay so bruce felty on facebook asks when you run generators down arrow i don't know what the down arrows number one what advice and recommend recommendations would you give when you run inflatables off generators any tips and tricks when you use them number two anything to make sure to do uh anything to make sure to do and make sure to avoid doing things in advance good question i actually bought a new generator today we have a uh event tomorrow where we're taking a generator 
and my old i have one generator because we never ever have generators at our party so we just don't around here for whatever reason i don't know why uh, so i went to go fire up the generator and my old like 12 year old generator is just beat to shit it was cheap it was from cabela's it's the champion brand it's been great it's gotten us through multiple hurricanes at my house uh but it's just kind of like eh, i did get it running i had to take the carburetor apart and do some do some interesting things to it and i did get it running but it wasn't running great and so i was like no 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 so I went today and bought, I literally bought a brand new generator today. So <clears throat> the generator that I bought, or let me, let me take you through my generator advice. So when you're going to go buy a generator, spend the money to get the right size generator. Okay. So I think the one I bought today was 700 bucks, 800 bucks, something like that. And so I, and I went to Harbor Freight, I got a Predator. And so what you're looking for, what you want in your generator is, no, let me, I'm gonna do this differently. In order to run one blower, you need a 20 amp breaker on the generator. Ignore watts, ignore running watts, starting watts, just ignore all that, okay? You just can go keep it simple and look at breakers, okay? So if you want to go run one blower, you need a 20 amp breaker. The, the generator that I brought bought today has two 20 amp breakers, so I can run two blowers, one on each 20 amp breaker, no problem. It can handle that load. That's what it's designed for. All right. Then the other kind of special thing you can do with the generator is most of them will have the bigger breaker. All right. That is meant to like run the air conditioner on a camper or on a motorhome. Usually they're 30 amps. I was rather surprised today to see there was some of those. Right. And it's got a it's got a goofy looking plug that like that 30 amp plug like if you guys have a camper you guys know exactly what i'm talking about but i had there was some today that had a 23 amp breaker there was one today that had a 25 amp breaker and i was like confused i was like what what are we doing what do we why are we doing this just give me 30. so the generator i brought bought today has a 30 amp breaker and two 20 amp breakers so with that generator i can run one blower off the 20 amp breaker second blower off the second 20 amp breaker so there's two total blowers then off the 30 amp you can get a little adapter it's cheap it's on amazon it's like 30 bucks and it plugs into the 30 amp with the goofy looking plug i don't know what that thing's called but a goofy looking plug and then off of that it comes to three different plugs like regular looking plugs off the 30 amp breaker you can run two blowers so the generator i brought bought today can run four total blowers four total blowers now if you're running 2.0s might get a little bit dicey two 2.0s off the 30 amp i am not an electrician so i'm not trying to send you down a rabbit hole that you don't want to go down but for better or worse that generator i bought today can run four blowers 20 amp 20 amp and two off of the 30. that's how you do generators in the inflatable business don't worry about watts though that the generator company is not going to put breakers that are too big to handle the watt for, for the wattage to handle. So that's how you handle breakers or that's how you handle generators. Um, let me make sure I answered the question. Tips and tricks. Yep. Cool. Anything to make sure you avoid doing. Yeah. Just don't, don't overload the, don't overload the generator. Like simple, simple as that. 20 amp, one, 20 amp, one, 30 amp, two, boom, you're good to go. All right, next question. This one's from YouTube Live. YouTube Live. So Andres Soriano asks, is 14 gauge for 50 foot cord okay? Many, 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 many differing opinions on this. My opinion on this situation is no. Just go buy 12 gauge cords that are all 100 feet long. What it does is it simplifies the task for your employees. There's no second guessing on anything. Do you need a 20, uh, sorry, do you need a 12 gauge cord to run a one horse blower? No, you don't. You don't. 14 gauge would be fine. However, if in your, like, I mean, I've got 50 or 60 cords out there. So if you have different lengths and different gauges, they've got to figure all that out. That's not a good standard operating procedure. So if you just simplify and buy all 12 gauge cords, all 100 feet long, you have maximum length of cord you can run and you have the correct gauge for any and all applications. So the guys just grab 
a cord for every drop off that they have or every blower that they're going to run. And there's no mental work for your drivers. There's no, there's nothing to be confused about. It's very simple. It's very clean. It's very easy. It's, it's good to go. So my suggestion is buy nothing but hundred foot, 12 gauge cords, because it just makes your life easy. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, all right. Other questions. Somebody said my phone's about to die buying a business. Can you give more info if needed? Yeah, Logan, just DM me um, any specifics you have on it. Uh, you know, it's just like buying. If you were to go buy one bounce house or one combo or one water slide used from some random person on Marketplace, what would you do? Cool. You're going to go buy a company out that has 12? Just do that. The The other option is, so I bought a company out. Um, so in at IAPA 2022, right, everybody always comes up to me. What are you buying? What are you buying? Literally bought one one inflatable game from Titan Inflatables. Uh, we bought the Carnival, the big Carnival four player from Titan. It's fucking awesome, by the way. That's the only thing we bought because there was a local um, operator that was thinking about selling. His name is Reese. Um, he's a super nice guy. I ran into him the other day at Sam's Club, actually. Um, but he messaged me, said, hey, I'm thinking about selling. I've got 16 units. I've got a motorized dolly and I've got a 16 foot trailer with high sides. And then he gave me a price. Um, I it was the right price. Like I'm bad with money. I, I'm really good with money. Uh, right. But when, when I'm not, I'm, but I'm bad with bargaining. So like he, he told me the price, which I think was 30 grand, 30, 33,000, something like that. And I was like, well, how about 32? He said, yeah. So I Venmoed him a thousand bucks to hold it. And then I went and bought it from him when I had time and, and bought him out. I bought out everything. I got a 16 foot trailer with high sides. I got a jolly dolly. It's an old jolly dolly with chain drive, but whatever it works, works great. And then I got 16 inflatables. Some of them were kind of uh, junky. There was two all white ones. You know, I, sh I probably should have done a little bit more homework, but the price was right. Like for 30 grand, I can go get 16 units, a Jolly Dolly and a 16 foot trailer. I just said, yeah, and went for it. Um, we still have plenty of those in the inventory. Some of the stuff he had duplicated some of my stuff that I didn't need duplicates of. So I cleaned them up and sold them, you know, and, and, and made out very well. And boom, just like that, you know, my inventory went up 16 units, you know, and then I probably sold four or five of them. So basically I, I got 10 units, a trailer and a Jolly Dolly for 30 ish grand minus the money I sold them for. So probably like 28,000 bucks. And it was just like, it's a good deal. It just, boom, it's done. And then, and then he's gone, right? Reese is gone. So there's no more competition up that way. He's kind of up in the country where we don't do a ton of events, but like, boom, done. It's he's gone. And now I have all of his units and I have all of his market share and we're good to go. So it just kind of depends on how you want to approach it. Or I guess, it, I, I guess you could say depends on the offer. depends on what's kind of coming through. One 100 foot cord, one 100 foot cord. I, I like to buy the cords, um, almost all of our cords. So I have some from mill spec. Um, the, the ones I bought from mill spec, I did actually buy at IAPA. They are, they have locking ends. They have a light on both ends. They're fucking super cool. And then for free, they're kind of expensive cords, but for free, they print whatever you want to print on them. So mine has my phone number and my URL printed all the way down the all hundred feet of the cord. So if it ever gets lost or like left at somebody's house, like that's my cord. They're like, eh, no, bro, it's got my URL on it. It's, it says it's the jump off.com. I promise you that's mine. Uh, those mill spec cords are super cool. Uh, the, the poor mill spec gal, she's a very, very good salesman. She calls me eh, probably quarterly. And I'm always like, I don't need any cords, dude. I don't need any cords. But if you want to sell some cords, give me an affiliate link. I'll sell you a whole bunch of fucking cords, but those mill spec ones are cool. Um, they were like a hundred bucks a cord, 110 bucks a cord, something like that. My favorite cords to buy though, is the ones from Sam's club. They are like the Hornet cords or it's like a B or a Hornet or something like that. They're like 55 bucks for a 12 gauge 100 foot cord from Sam's Club. Absolutely love them. Never had any of them fail. I've never had to replace the end on one. Knock on wood, they're awesome and they're half the fucking price. So I just go to Sam's Club and load up when I need them. You're very welcome, Logan. You are very welcome. All right, how are we doing on time? We're doing good, we're doing good, we're doing good. So uh, you guys got any other questions you guys wanna ask? I had one more topic I kind of wanted to hit on. I don't know if it fits into the show very well, but we can do it. But uh, I'll stall. Are you guys out there drinking? What do you guys got? What do you guys got tonight? I got my my go-to Michelob Ultra that Wes gave me shit for the other night. 
just a good drinking beer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I wish I had some, I wish I had some, uh, bush light. That'd be good. Andres asked good height for a combo minimum height. Uh, that's not really a thing for combos. Yeah. They're kind of all the same height. They're kind of always kind of always the same height. Hey, yeah. So like not now, not a thing. Don't not, 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 nothing to worry. Dave's got a captain and Coke. Shout out to Mike Jones, my old roommate from South Dakota, still one of my close, close homies. He was captain of the captain back when I was back when I was uh back when I was a friend. Oh yeah, all right. That's it's the long one, right? Uh, let me go find it. Oh no, this one. Okay. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay, looking to hire for a helper. When you start to hire, uh, do you have them all insured? Fill out 1099 form, sign a non liability form in case they get hurt on the job. Just the paperwork process. So it's a tricky question. So let me answer it two ways. I'll answer it the legal way, and then I'll answer it kind of the more common, commonly done way from what my really old and bad and fired now CPA told me. So you cannot go hire somebody as a 1099. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. For a 1099 means they're a, a, a subcontractor. They're doing their work on their own time with their own equipment on their own accord. So think about building a pool, right? So if you're a pool builder, but you don't want to take over doing laying the travertine, because that's, you know, you don't want to hire out the guys for travertine. You don't want to go have to find the supplier for the travertine and the tools to grind the edge down for the coping of the, you know, all that stuff. So what you would do as a pool builder is you price out the travertine as you price out the travertine, and then you'd go find a company that specializes in in laying hardscapes like that, and they would lay the travertine down. So the travertine team, so to speak, that would come out and and finish that portion of your pool, uh, that or finish the portion of the pool that you're building for a client, is not your employee. You take the money from the client and basically pass it down to the 1099, pass it down to the subcontractor that's going to lay the travertine. That's how a 1099 works. In the inflatable industry, the person's going to show up at your warehouse. When you tell them to show up at your warehouse, they're going to take your bounce house, your blower, your cord, your anchors, probably your truck, probably your trailer, and they're going to go run the route that you designed for, right? There's, none of that is a 1099. None of that is a contractor. That's an employee. So by law, you they're, they're, they're employees and they're W-2. When you switch to W-2, it comes with three extra added expenses that are, are rather expensive. Number one, any W-2 employee that you have, you have to have them on a worker's comp policy. So you have to carry worker's comp. The way my worker's comp works is the higher my payroll, the higher my worker's comp, the lower my payroll, the wor lower my uh, worker's comp. And then it's audited at the end of the year. There was a fucking shortage this year. I had to pay him three grand. It was stupid, but it was what it was. The other expense that comes in is, is rather small, but you have to have some sort of payroll system in order to pay them. So you have to go get Gusto or you have to go get QuickBooks, right? And pay the payroll charge of that, whatever, a hundred bucks a month. And then maybe there's a fee for the for each transfer. I don't know how it all works. I instead went and got an accountant. So I went and kind of poked around. I found a poster on Facebook who's a good accountant. Another local uh, bounce house operator near me um, who I'm subbing out. I actually am subcontracting his trackless drain here soon. But uh, his name's Matt. Matt said, go talk to this guy. So I hooked up with Mark. Uh, and, and Mark's been great. And so basically Mark is my accountant. He does all the books for all of my businesses. So he's in QuickBooks and he balances all the books and, and categorizes all the charges and does all of that. And then every two weeks I send him a spreadsheet of all of the hours for the guys. And then he has an ADP um, account that he does all the payroll and it goes into the guy's accounts and I just pay him whatever that costs. Right. So there's workers comp expensive, there's payroll system, which is lower. And then the other thing that you have to do as W-2 employees is you got to pay half their taxes. So roughly seven and a half percent, if I'm remembering correctly, roughly seven and a half percent of their federal, I think, and state taxes. I don't remember exactly, but about seven and a half percent, you got to pay their taxes. So like when I go run a payroll, you know, that's going to be five grand, which is, a you know, this time of year, that's average for me. There'll be another... Mm, 1100 bucks that's taxes and then another i don't off the top of my head i can't remember what my 
my workers comp will be, but 200 bucks, something like that. Right. So you basically, every payroll I tack on about an extra 1500 bucks, I got to pay out to do things properly. So, so the, so the W2 process is the way to do it. It's the way to do it correctly. It keeps your guys um, safe because they're insured under a workers comp policy, but it is expensive. So when you're tiny, now this is the, this is the advice from the bad CPA. Okay. So she said, when you're small, if you just pay them all 1099, it's not a very big deal because you're so small, nobody's going to come after you. You're not making a fuss. Like you're not, you are technically doing it incorrectly, but like nobody's going to notice. Nobody's really going to care. Uh, but, but what that CPA told me was unless you get yourself into a situation where one of your employees goes to complain to the workforce commission that they're 1099 when they're clearly an employee, then the workforce commission can come audit you and you can get yourself into some hot water. But from what she told me, which she was, she had a lot of conviction when she told me this is when you're a very, very small business, the 1099 is a fairly common way to pay people when you're very, very small. So with all of that information, right, keeping in mind that uh, I'm totally shooting from the hip because clearly I'm obviously not a CPA, you got to take that information and kind of go make your decision with it. If you have a very low risk appetite, you just want to go W-2 and just be buttoned up and that's what it costs to do business because that's the truth. If if you have a little bit higher risk appetite, you want to maintain some money for cash flow and do things on the cheap. 1090, like if you have one guy that comes to clean bounce houses, $15 a bounce house, and that's the only person you have, you know what I mean? You're, 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 you're going to be, um, it's a risk, but you can 1099 to them without a lot of issues, I guess you could say. I don't know. I hope that made sense. I, I really tried to make that make as much sense as I possibly could. But in short, W2 is always going to be the goal and always going to be the right move. Let's see. Uh, where's Dave's first question? Please tell me there's a better option than sandbags for now. There's not. There is not. Uh, well, actually, no, 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 no. I'm going to take that back. There's two other options. One of them is a bad option um, because you got to take a lot of sandbags. So, like, we have an event tomorrow that is a very small toddler combo and a 60 foot two piece obstacle course going on pavement. So there, there's three, we have three options tomorrow. So your number one option is sandbags, right? So you got to sandbag it. You got to follow the um, manufacturer's guidelines for how much weight per anchor point that you need of sandbags. It's going to be 150 pounds a piece, maybe a hundred, anywhere from hundred to 200 pounds per anchor point. All right. The other problem that arises in pavement is I am super strict on this is the wind, the wind factor. It's just, it doesn't matter how many freaking sandbags you have on that thing. It's a wind sail if it's going to be windy. So if we have any wind at all, if, or if, if wind is going to be over 10 miles per hour, basically what we do is we reach out to the clients. We let them know, like, look, it's a forecast. We don't know what the forecast is going or how correct the forecast is going to be tomorrow. But if we're over 10 miles per hour on wind, we have to put it on grass. Have to. We're not, it's, it's just not negotiable. If they have a place where they can put it on grass, we're good. If they don't, where then then it comes down to like okay if it's windy tomorrow we have to cancel this because I'm not I'm not going to risk you know injury children's lives this thing's blowing around right because the sandbags are just not as heavy as you think they are right so that's your sandbag you can do water bags right I made a video with water bags a long time ago that that, that went like micro viral. But we had an event um, with our 27 foot dual lane on pavement, and we just didn't have enough sandbags because it takes like 8 billion. So we used our water bags. And I'm like, no big deal, dude. We got uh, eight or 10 water bags, right? And the water bag can hold, a water bag holds more weight. A water bag will be 80 pounds off the top of my head because I think it holds 10 gallons of water. And so I'm like, yeah, that'll be great. Well, what you don't really think about when you have water bags is how effing long it takes to fill a water bag. Like it's, it's significant amount of time times eight or 10 or however many we used. It was, it was a lot, dude. Um, we were kind of lucky they had, uh, it was at an industrial ish party, like a, a party for a company that's at, at their warehouse. And so they have posts at the corners of the, what are those called? They have those little concrete posts at the corner of like the warehouse, right? So you don't like 
back into the corner of the warehouse. So we tied off to a bunch of those and that saved us, that saved our ass. And then we were able to also tie off to, there was a gigantic, massive, massive, massive tents. And they had the giant 50 gallon water jug, water barrels. So we tied off to water barrels, those little posts, and then our sandbags and water bags got us out of the rest. Like we were good to go, but filling up the water bags takes forever. And then emptying the water bags that pick up also takes forever. So water bags suck as a, as a mode of weighting down things. It's an emergent. It's just in case it's just in case you, you fuck up and don't bring enough sandbags, or it's just in case you screw up and you get there and you're like, Oh, this was a pavement drop. We didn't communicate this properly. Like the water bags there to kind of bail you out. Then the other um, best alternative is kind of, uh, I think Mark Good invented it, but he's got this, this super cool thing he does with tap cons. So you go get concrete screws, you drill a hole, then you send the concrete screw in with a washer on it and you do like a figure eight thing. So you do this twice. So they're really close to each other. And then you put the, you put the anchor point inside of that and then send those two washers down on top of each other. And so then everything is screwed into the concrete. I don't know what the rating is per Tapcon, but that is a massively secure way to do it. So if you're going to do it in somebody's driveway, you got to talk them into drilling holes in the driveway. They fill in with dirt. You don't notice them. Um, that's what Marcus told me. I've never done it before. But if you're in a parking lot or like tomorrow, we're in a parking lot. So if it were to be super windy tomorrow, which it's not going to be, but if it were to be super windy tomorrow, I would go to that setup with Roman and we would do the Tapcon thing. Those are your options. Those are your options. Moving sandbags uh, is kind of sucky. But what I kind of always tell people is I'm like, there's a trade-off. So you've got to go move a billion sandbags. So tomorrow, like we got to have a million sandbags on this obstacle course. Um, but what you kind of trade off for is it's on concrete. So it's not going to be the, the unit's not going to get very dirty. Down here, our ground is this hard clay that, like, I swear to God, if you sneeze on it, it turns into mud, and it's, like, nasty. I post stories every now and then of the nasty mud. and you Or you can go to my TikTok, and you can see some of my videos on TikTok of the old mud back in the day uh, from back when I used to go pick up uh, slides a lot more often. Um, so, so for us, like it's not going to be anywhere that it could potentially be muddy. That means we don't have to tarp. So, so it's a trade-off is, is the sandbags more work? Yes. But if you have a rolls all, like you just pile them on the rolls all and just go drive around and just hook them on. It's really not that hard. Um, it's hardest to get them onto the trailer. That's it. So, but the, yeah, those are your options when you're doing, uh, those are your options when you're doing hard ground setups, you got the drill. Where you get the sandbags and the water bags will bail you out. Yes, dude, team tarp. I don't understand how people don't tarp. Um, if I still, uh, so I grew up in Salt Lake City where the ground is like hard and rocky, right? Because you're like basically in the mountains. I don't know that I would tarp under the whole unit there because I don't think I would need to because nothing turns into mud. Down where I'm at, I just don't understand how you don't tarp where I'm at, dude. Um, let's see. All right, we got lots of stuff coming in now. <laughs> Gabe said, I think your mud reels and stories are the reason that the whole tarp thing slash no tarp thing got started in PRK. Could have, could have, I'm not sure, but it's like it, there, it's, it's, it's staggering, dude. When you go look at, oh, when you go look at our setups where the kids, you know, jump in. So like basically what will happen is where the water is going to be coming, you know, let's say it's a water slide. And so the kids jump out of the pool onto the tarp that's on the grass and they're soaking wet and they're bringing water with them out of the pool and then they go and they jump boom onto the grass and then they go up the thing and then there's 15 kids at the party so it's just constant 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 the ground literally turns into jello but it's mud like and so you go to pick it up and you can walk on the top of the tarp and it like squishes and sinks and you'll sink like this far like it's disgusting and so like around here, like again, if you're in Arizona, I understand why your team no tarp. Around here, it's just like I I I I just I I got nothing. I got nothing. But like you have to tarp. So I'm 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 hashtag team tarp. But um let's see. Here's an extension cord one. Uh so Bruce, when having where when using well uh, when having to use extension cords while running a generator, what gauge do you use? Yeah, 12. Everything we have is just 12. All 12, all hundred. Always, 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 always. 
Yeah, solid rock. Yeah, Northwest Arkansas, Ozark Mountains, no tarp, solid rock. Right. I would be totally down for that. I'd be totally down for that. Uh, can't believe you're selling the green and orange pirate ship. You're talking to me, Dave? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I have nothing for sale currently. About to order my first water slide at the end of this month from Magic Jump, a 15-foot one. Um, I, I have no Magic Jump water slides. I have three, uh, two Magic Jump bounce houses, one Magic Jump dry combo, and one Magic Jump wet dry combo. The two bounce houses and dry combo I have, I'm not lying, are from 2008. Eight. And they're in immaculate condition, other than some of the graphics are a little busted on the on the outside, but just insane. Um, and then today I bought the Paw Patrol Easy combo from Magic Jump. I'm very excited to get some Paw Patrol up in here. Um, but I yeah, I'm a huge fan of Magic Jump. Really, 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 really love them. Let's see. Uh, this is from Sturamic. Sturamic? Sturamic. Hey Nick, just started. I just started my bounce house business. Question about the insurance. How much should I pay for insurance for three units and who you recommend for starters like myself? Thank you. And more. How much should you pay? That's going to depend on them. Uh, it depends on what your state you're in. If you're in Louisiana, you're going to probably pay five grand. If you're in a less hated state for insurance companies, like our house insurance sucks here. Our car insurance sucks here. That's because we have hurricanes and with floods. So the, the the insurance companies take a bath whenever they insure anybody around here. So why that makes my bounce house insurance so expensive, I'm not 100% sure, right? Because it's just liability, but it is. Uh, but it's about five grand. Um, I've heard that the absolute basement bottom floor for insurance is $3,700. I think Shane posted that in one of the Facebook groups the other day. He talked to OVD. Luke at OVD said 3,700 is basically your lowest possible minimum that you can get. If you can get 3,700 bucks, you, 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 you sign that and you, you sign up cause that's badass. But I would, I would say just plan on five grand. So that's why, um, in my very early content, like I made a video a really long time ago that's done really well, which was how to buy your first bounce house. And I basically, I'm talking about how to start your company. You buy your first bounce house, da, 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 da. At the time of recording that video, the minimum in Louisiana was 2,500. So the minimum in other states was was lower, right? That's just no longer a thing. Like so that that piece of content will be evergreen because of the way YouTube works. Um, but I really probably should reshoot it because you can't start with one. Can you start with three? Sure, but there's just not going to be a lot of profit because in order to you know recoup just your insurance of the minimum of 3,700 bucks with three units, you got to hustle to do that. So that's kind of why um, I shot the newer video that's that's done very, very well, which is called The Truth About Starting a Bounce House Business. It's on my YouTube channel. And basically in there, I outline the fact that if you have 20 grand to start with, you'll be okay, but you really probably need 30. Yeah, I, I don't take into account whether or not you own a trailer, like in that video, I'm buying a trailer as well, but you really need you know, you really need 20 grand to start the business because you've got to buy at least five. If you can't buy five, buy eight. You know what I mean? You just have to start with that many units because if you don't, you're kind of screwed because you have no way of of making any profit. Like you're just going to be a break-even company forever. And so, you know, I guess I guess you could argue that you start with three units, you know, you hustle to, to break even or maybe get a little bit of a profit after your insurance premium. And then as your personal finances, right? Because you're probably still working a job. So as you save enough money up, you buy another one with cash. And you got to buy another one with cash. And you got to buy another one with cash. And then at that point in time, your business would start to become profitable where the business could fund itself. Uh, I mean, I was able in 2019 to start with two units. Um, didn't really rent that many times. And then I got our third unit and we were good to go because the insurance was much cheaper back then, you know? But But you really need... Um, and then, uh, who to buy from? Yeah. The other question you asked was who to buy from the cheapest person you can find where the policy has good coverage, right? Make sure you read through the policy coverage. And if you need help, reach out to, to somebody that's an, uh, experienced operator on Facebook and see if you can get some, you know, just somebody to kind of like proofread, I guess you could say your liability to make sure you're good to go. You're going to need a $1 million policy with a $2 million aggregate at minimum. And then 
right? The the deductible and all the other insurancey stuff matters, but better or worse, take your cheapest person. Take take your cheapest one that you can get. What if they get hurt as a 1099? That would not be good for anyone. Yeah, if you 1099 your guys and they get hurt, you don't have a workers' comp policy. You can get some sort of workers' comp policy that covers your 1099 workers. Um, I don't remember all of the ins and outs about that. I did research that a long time ago for my Christmas light business. Um, but yeah, but it's just, you know, uh, like I said, if your risk appetite is, is, is low to average or low to normal, 1099ing is, is a risk. So you just gotta, you just, it's not what you should do. You should, you should definitely W2 them. Um, uh, brown and orange one. I don't, oh no, 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 no. You're thinking, so this weird thing is happening. Okay. So Dave's saying that. Uh, he was bummed that I was selling my pirate combo. Uh, it's from Spacewalk. It's the pirate foreign one. No, I'm not selling it. So this weird thing is happening where my Facebook marketplace posts from like three or four years ago are somehow auto renewing themselves. And so then whenever you post something on, so if I were to like go post something for sale on far, Facebook marketplace right now, all my friends, which I have like 3,500 on Facebook, all my friends see get a notification that nick posted this for sale so that facebook marketplace post is auto renewing somehow that's not me doing it it's really old and it's from way back in the day and so then it's popping on your feed saying nick is selling an item right but it probably is for 240 bucks or 220 bucks or something for what i was renting that unit for back in 2020 and so i'm not i'm not selling those i have no i i have no idea what what is causing that to happen uh let's see west bend yeah that that's that's a reputable company uh yep five units yeah five units is a good is, is a good number to start with more the merrier the more the merrier there used to be this thing in the in the groups where people would come in and say i want to get in the image or i want to get into the industry i'm going to buy 10 units and then there would be a whole bunch of uh um not negative posts but a lot of people saying you're going to burn yourself out that's too many to start with start smaller da, 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 da. those days are gone like you have to go start a real business. That's the only way to get into this industry legitly is to go start a real business and drop 20 to 30 grand and get five to 10 units and start that way. And, and the burnout um, is not a factor because you can't pay your bills unless you do that. Uh, let's see. Oh my God, this is so... Okay, so TJ Shaw said, just when you think you have enough units, you realize you could use more. Dear God, is that not the truth? I remember when we got to like 55, 50, 55, something like that. That was after I bought out that company um, in, in December of 2022. Uh, I was like, all right, we're at 50 now. We're fucking unstoppable. And then, you know, your best units rented all the time. Your biggest water slides always fucking rented. And it's just like, oh my God. So now we're up to like 72, I think. And I, I mean, I could literally just go pull up. You know, I was trying to get Magic Jump to give me a good deal on like six units because I'm like, give me a good deal on like six units, dude. I'll buy six units right now. I need this. I need that. I need, you know, I need Mickey. I need Spider-Man. I need some fucking Star Wars. I need wet, dry obstacle courses. I only have one wet, dry obstacle course, even though I have five obstacle courses. I need, it just never ends, dude. It just never ends. When you first started, you charge an overnight fee. And how do you feel about overnight fees in general? Good question, Bruce. No, when I first started, I did the opposite. Uh, I made everybody keep them all weekend, right? Cause I was like, yeah, we're going to do, well, no, 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 no. Let me, let me give myself a little bit of credit. So around my immediate area, I am the only operator that does one day rent or, or, or hourly rentals. Um, I've now switched that. So now we do everything free overnight. Everything is free overnight. And then I offer for a higher price that you can keep it for two days. So we'll drop Friday, pick up Sunday, drop Saturday, pick up Monday, and that's, it's all in the, it's all in the inflatable office pricing. Right. Um, so when I first started, yeah, we did every, we actually did everything Friday to Monday because my wife owns a hair salon. And so she's gone on Saturday and so, and then she's off on Monday so she could come and help me pick up the big water slides. So I was, it was actually the opposite when I first started and then, um, not in my immediate area, one County over there's two businesses over there. There's Fred who owns extreme. So he's normal. He does, you know, regularly normal one day rentals or hourly rentals, however you want to say them. And then so does Matt, Matt at all star. And so I kind of struck up a little bit of a, a working friendship, so to speak with Matt. Um, we actually shared an employee way back in the day, another guy named Matt, but, um, Matt would come and help me clean. But, um, anyway, Matt, the owner of the company, Matt 
was pushing me, pushing me, pushing me, pushing me to get out of um, the all weekend rentals and go to hourly because you make more money. And I was like, dude, around here, though, nobody else does it. Um, but I eventually took his advice um, when I launched my inflatable office website. I went to six hour rentals and lo and behold, I made more money. But uh, it just uh, running pickups at night is a huge dude to go pick up at night is just all the, that's where all the problems happen, right? So it's Saturday night. You got to go pick up rentals or your guys got to go pick up rentals and there's drunk guys and you got to kick people off the slides. And then that's just when all the problems are going to happen or Saturday night at 8 PM. And it was just like exhausting. So we made the switch. Um, we made the switch last year sometime where we just said, no, screw that. Everybody gets free overnight. Like, so that way we drop everything on Friday that has that the weekend rental deal now. And we drop everything on everything else drops on Saturday morning, gets picked up on Sunday. And then we always have some Sunday rentals. So it's not nearly as busy, but no, everybody gets free overnight now. It says it right on the website. Like you, there's not an option, you know, to do anything. No, th there is, I, I've, which I've got to change because homeowners are renting, you know, one day pick up at night. I'm like, no, 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 no. If you're in a backyard, you're keeping it overnight. It's just, the better way to operate. It's so much easier. Your life is so much better. You have peace of mind. Your work day ends, you know, by 1 p.m. on Saturday. There's no issues. There's no bullshit. You're out at dinner for your dad's retirement party on Saturday night. And then the guys can't find the address or the, there's a flat on the tire or the customer's confused or angry or there's a drunk guy. Just a whole thing. So anybody that picks up still day of, I don't understand the thinking of it. I don't think you're wrong. It's just not what I want to do. Just not what I want to do. Yeah, that's kind of how that's kind of how I've changed mine, Justin. 7 p.m. is our last pickup time. So if you're if you're doing same day rental, 7 p.m. is the latest you can pick up, at, choose as as pickup at booking. Um, but I'm changing it to where I'm going to change the wording where it says free overnight, all weekend rental, and then the the other one says same day rental, and it's there for schools, churches, that kind of thing, and it's the same price as the free overnight. But uh, I've got to change the wording where it's going to say like corporate rental. Like so backyard people aren't picking that. Like we ain't coming. We ain't coming at six to end your party for you. You got to kick your own people out, dude. I'm not doing it. Yeah, that I, I'm very close to doing that, Kevin. So Kevin said, I'm going to start charging extra to the people that want to pick up same day. So I was this close to doing it. The reason I didn't, though, is because I didn't want to have on the website for a school to come and be like, oh, good. We don't need it overnight. Well, oh, wait, it's fucking more expensive. And then they bounce. Right. So that's why my overnight pricing is the same as my same day pricing is because I don't want to scare away those corporate rentals. But that's why I'm going to change it where I'm going to say like school or church rental, you know, like school, church or corporate rental, like the backyard, your backyard person is staying overnight and you don't get a choice. I don't care. Should you start with themed bounce houses or more generic ones? Uh, my answer to this now has become both. So, no, I don't think you should go get mickey mouse clubhouse as your first five units it's just not going to be the best way to do it now if you want to go get one of those out of five mazel tov go go knock yourself out maybe i'm wrong should you go get generic ones that are red white and blue no that shit's boring nowadays man like the industry has come so far the designs are so amazing i do not think you should have very many of those generic ones you should have some like the you know a castle whatever but generally speaking, no. So uh, that's why I say both. So it comes in the middle. So you should go buy um, a dinosaur themed one, right? That's fine. All boys don't care if it's a dinosaur one. You should go buy a pink, purple, and orange sparkly one, like my magic jump one. That's great. Girls love that. You should go buy a unicorn one. All girls love that. You should go buy a monster truck one. You should go buy mm, a tropical one. You should go buy a space one. You should go buy a gamer one, like that jump orange gamer one. Uh, I think Leisure Activities has one that's really, really cool too. You should go buy loosely themed units, right? Space, tropical, that kind of thing. That's what you should go get because it's got a good wow factor to it. Don't go get all Spider-Man. Don't go get all Superman, right? That, that That's kind of what I mean. Um. Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let me send you. I'm going to send you this. Uh, invite Justin. Let me get it for you. All right, it's coming. It's coming. All right, you guys got other questions? I'm going to bring Justin on here for a bit. Let me find you in my chats. Uh, if you guys 
are not. Oh, I was going to plug. I forgot. I was going to plug my. I was going to plug my uh, my newsletter, dude. So it's not really. I don't know if it's a newsletter. But uh, so every Thursday I send out an email and and I I like to write. I'm, I, I love to write, actually. And so my writing style ends up being very similar to this, like the way I talk. Right. And so I started sending out a, a email every Thursday. The list has grown a lot. Right. It's up to today's email went out about 1 p.m. I think it went to 1425 people. But if you guys want to do that, the link should be in the description of the video. I don't know if it's going to actually work i've never tried that before but you guys can go sign up for for my email it's uh yeah it, it you know it's called the weekly reminder to just go it tends to be very inspirational very motivational um every now and then i send one out that's really good and a lot of people reply to it but it's a good time and it's it's just kind of a business content and then very very uh yeah like like i said kind of motivational stuff like to kind of keep you going get you through your weekend so if you guys want to do that i think think it's in the description it's supposed to be in the description anyways what up all right there we go what up dude what's going on oh you know uh coming up here on hour two so hour two i think i'm gonna call it but we got uh 15 good minutes left crack right. another brewski you got I your twisted tees yeah i got my twisted tees i always got some twisted tees laying around here yeah <laughs> are you guys getting busy because you guys are probably starting to get warm now huh yeah, it's it's already been getting nuts. I uh, I'm already up for last year and stuff. I was looking at the Matt was talking about. Oh, I'm up. What did he say? He's up like 120 percent or like two or three hundred percent. But then he said he had like only two bookings last year during this time. I was oh, like, oh right, okay. right, right. Yeah, I was like, okay, that makes more sense. Whereas like uh, we're we're pretty much we doubled um, we doubled each month so far. I'm That's good. If I double this month, I'll be I'll be excited. I just hired somebody um, to do all of my sales, answer outbound sales and uh, inbound calls, and answer all the emails and answer all the return calls. And when they're not doing that, they're just going to work on uh, outbound calls and some of the marketing stuff here. Yeah, that's what's up, dude. That'll change your life, bro. That's one of the best moves I ever did. That's why I started Raise because I hired freaking Cassie, and I'm like, oh my god, I can go like do valuable things now because the phone doesn't ring and take me away from what I'm doing 24 seven. Like, yeah, it's I don't know. I can I get a lot of phone calls from a lot of bigger companies, so it's like I'm not gonna let him talk to the Erie County Fair. You know what I mean? That's a twenty yeah. dollar job. Yeah, basically the way I've been doing it, the <clears throat> basically the way I've been doing it now is when like a school rental comes through, they are the only people that I contact with my personal cell phone. So um on the 20th, we have like a three thousand dollar, thirty, thirty five hundred dollar event, something like that. It's like she has my cell phone. I save her number. Her name's Nicole. See, that's not a lot in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what it's like. I he can handle that all day long. That's easy shit. Where it's like, I'm doing. I don't know. I'm weird. I guess when it comes to like, you know what I mean. Like, I handle a lot of the intricate festival and like custom stuff and things like that. I want to be him from that end. But like, what I like, what I really like, basically organization. That's what it really comes down to. Mm -hmm. Um. Having a bunch of email, like you can't see it, but there's like a whole list of emails we're we're basically doing. So every single person in the company will have their own email, but then also there's going to be some shared emails. Mm -hmm. All the sales will be a in a shared email. All of the forms and stuff like that will be in a shared email. I I'm switching over to IO. Shout out to BCN. <laughs> But I'm uh, I am switching over to IO for my main site. I'm using BCN for my phone party site now. And uh, as far as the IO goes, I I like it because I can actually put all my forms per customer. So uh, all my W nine forms and stuff like that mm -hmm. that I get from different people. All, all the all of the different uh, what other stuff was there? There was like like. Um, my insurance certificate of insurance when i use it they're good for a year 
so I can store those under the under the client too. So if there's another customer, um, IO the way they they handle their their stuff is basically by organization. Then it would be a um, client, and then you have a lead. So the way I explain it is, I have a college that I work with. I do the the college would be the organization. I ha- I do the student activities department for that college, the corporate, the uh, culture of diversity center for that co- that college, some of the homecoming events for the homecoming team for that college, and I also do the staff parties for all the staff members of that college. Um, those are four different contacts that I have for that co- college. Those are the customers. And then each one of those, they can have, you know what I mean? Student activities might do four or five jobs with me in a year. Are and you doing that year. in the in the IOCRM? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't have the CRM and I was kind of poking around with it because um, it's worth the money. Yeah, that's so as we started Raise, uh, we brought we brought on a really big client uh down in Miami. And <clears throat> he has two brands actually, and the CRM. And so then, you know, kind of talking with him, you know, he's like, well, I can see exactly what goes on on every contact. Cause you can see everything in the CRM. And I'm like, Oh damn. See, but the thing about the thing about the jump off is like, we're in such a small little rural area. Like I mean, a use thousand high level like, and send it all through that. That's also a CRM. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, to be clear. Think, yeah. So, we so- don't, we don't utilize, <laughs> we don't utilize like one, one hundredth of what high level can possibly take on so that's kind of where my my biggest mantra is like i fucking spent so much i made 500k last year i only paid myself eight grand damn (laughs) where the fuck did all the money go (laughs) so so that's kind of where i'm at (laughs) this year is uh what the fuck am i spending money on what am i doing here what um like where you know what I mean a lot here I know where I spent all the money on basically and it's more of not spending the money again in those places um and yeah, I don't I was, really buy as much I bought a lot of stuff last year I don't I don't really need to buy nearly anything um, yeah we were the same cuz we moved into here so I spent I mean god knows how much I spent on pallet racking and the forklift yeah. and all of that stuff so like all the water slide money is really where, like, really where we get into the black, right? Uh, uh, so, I, I, I made a mistake just in trucks last year. Like, I was spending, I was spending around nine hundred dollars a week, and I'm spending nine, I'm spending twelve hundred dollars a month now. And I was renting two trucks at one point, damn, most of the summer. And so it's like now I'm paying that amount of money a month that I was paying a week. Yeah, one of the one of the <laughs> strengths it, it still irks me every fucking payroll, but I'm on salary because I switched over to an S corp. So like I have a salary yep. that goes to me. No matter, like I have to pay myself X number of dollars per year. So like I had to actually skip one of my paychecks in I think in mid February because it was just like uh, oh no because I had an unexpected. Uh, an unexpected tax shortage, a sales tax shortage that cost me a bunch of money that was kind of in the account set aside to make sure that I can make payroll. And so then I had to skip a check. So I've got to make that up once we get it to, to water slide season, which will be no big deal. But but that it makes it to where I have like my pay is coming out no matter what. So I have to make sure that I am balanced like I look at the credit cards and the bank account and the PayPal, like, you know, every, literally every Monday I balance it out and then I can kind of project my payroll. And so I'm, I'm very meticulous about all of that, but I also have Mark. So Mark sends me a P and L every month, right. For the month, the quarter, I think it's the month, the quarter of the year. So I can look and kind of see the business. But I mean, we last year, we were not in the black until May. Like we were in the red. It's one of those things where too, or like I spent a lot of money on training last year. And like my guys are solid. And I spent even more time on these two kids that are staying too. And they are both about to be drivers this year. Nice. Like, 
So yeah, that makes that just makes life so much easier, dude. When you have flexibility. The, yeah, it's I'm I train the industry. I would hope that I can train my freaking staff members. And I tell I tell them all the time, like, dude, you guys, you guys get it rougher than anybody else. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, we you can't have that there. Like, that's crooked. I have to film it <laughs> for everybody. It can't be crooked. These bounce house people love to talk shit. Like, yes, they, <laughs> like, yes, they, they can't be crooked. You don't be jumping on the forklift with like, you know what I mean? And walking over the forklift. That's against OSHA. Like <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, little, little stuff though. Like it's, you know what I mean? And I, I love that. I honestly love not being complacent. I had a buddy talk about that today. They're, they're like, uh, yeah, this one cat, he thinks he knows everything. As soon as he hears it on, he can hear it on TV. And then suddenly, oh, I, yeah, I know all about that. Now I can do that. And it's like no practice, complete complacency where it's like, I literally told him today, like, I honestly believe one of my company is one of the biggest and best in Buffalo, and it is. Every day I walk in here, like we ain't shit, right? We ain't shit, and we got to freaking change Nate. Like we got we got to upset. We're we're losing, even if we're winning. Like that's that's the mentality I had. We're at war. Like, yeah, I talk about that with uh, so uh, Matt from Big and Bright Inflatables. Obviously, we co-own our Christmas light distribution company, so we talk all the time. We literally have a, a weekly meeting about the Christmas light company but we also you know bullshit about inflatables or whatever and he'll be like yeah i'll be like how you guys doing you know and so like in february he was up like 228 percent or something ridiculous I'm like bro you're killing it and like he's so he, he kind of remains so stoic and i'm like you don't look like you're celebrating he's like oh, i just feel like like the phone hasn't rang today i feel like it's over i'm like that's so funny because i feel the same way like as of right now we're up on the year uh, I think 20 something percent. I just did it today in my freaking staff meeting. So I should know the numbers, but then the next two weeks we've already, so this weekend we crushed, we we're up like 40% this weekend. And then the following weekend we already smashed. So if you factor in those two, those two weekends, we're up on the year 41%. But like, <laughs> I never celebrate because all I do is I go, okay, 41%. And I have a little, you know, cell that projects out 41% times what our year was last year puts us at this potential revenue at the end of the year. But I always like doom and gloom. I scroll down and I look at the weeks that are coming up in May that are just massive. I'm like, we cannot relax. We do not get to celebrate. You know, we don't celebrate till like September because then after that, the weeks get small and we can, we can manage like, no, cause one bad week can send it all toppling. You want, can you pull up this, uh, what you call it, this comment by Jacob? Uh, I, I do want to. I do want to address this. I like to address. I'm very transparent. I like to address things like this. Yeah. So yeah, yes, I love BCN, and yes, I love IO. Um, believe it or not, Tim has been like one of my biggest sponsors since day one, and has supported me and everything. He is the last software solution I chose. Not out. It's just. It's just how it kind of went down. I chose ERS. Before I even joined a Facebook group, to be honest with you, years ago, um, that bunch of things went down. I ended up leaving them. But then I be, like BCN is is great for being basic, doing things well, but within a confined area. And to be honest with you, if I didn't own tents. And I didn't have these very perceived notions of how I want to run my business my way and not within the constraints of the system, then that that's basically what BCN is there for. BC like not too basic, more of within the confines. And I still could have run my company like completely through that. And I still run my phone business through BCN. Um and it does more intricate reporting than your like some of the other sites I see out there when it comes to foam, um, including IO. It would have it would take a lot more setting up. I would take it would take me at least an extra fucking two weeks to try and set up what I set up in BCN in in hours and whatnot when it comes to foam, um, compared to 
two other things. But I, I also I've used the system for two years, so that's that's just semantics. What I'm trying to get at is the real reason I switched from BCN to IO is so I can actually have two rental programs and sell both of those programs to everybody. And because I was going to, no matter what, I had to redesign the front end of my website. The front end of my website I built with B- with BCN, they built it, and it's hosted on their platform. Um, I'm going to get a little morbid here, and, and I'm, I don't want to, you know what I mean, but there was, I'm, this dude was awesome. His name was Dion. He ended up passing away. He was their lead web developer. Like that just, and then, you know what I mean? They, they've, they've just gotten back to the point I feel this year where they can operate the same way, but they, and they still are lacking some of the expertise they had from, from Dion and whatnot. Now, God forbid, I don't even want to get, go down, but like, you know what I mean? You, something could happen to, one of the heads of these companies, like if I die tomorrow, this company's fucked. PRK's probably <laughs> fucked. Like, you know what I mean? Like hopefully somebody, Nick will probably take that over or something. But you, you can you see where I'm trying to say? Like, right. That I got off of BCN because I want it. Like I have to change the whole front end of my website because I want to control of it. I'm not about to spend thousands of dollars a month in SEO on a front end, I don't own. Right. I can change my plugin whenever. I recommend everybody do that. Whether they use BCN, IO, or ERS, take the time and have a web developer build something for you or, or designer. I also have one on staff and we're, we're selling websites now too, kind of, but that's, that's cool. A yeah, long that's really, thing, I guess, but what? no, <laughs> he, he's been doing it for me. He's doing it on the side for himself. It's his own company, Eric Studios. It just happens to be somebody that actually is in Buffalo. I got him into the industry, etc. But you can throw the keys right there. Yeah, the way the way that I kind of break it down, like when people ask me about it, <clears throat> you know, that BCN's cheaper and it does all this, that, whatever. I kind of tell them, I'm like, listen, if you want to. Uh, a, a simple plug and play where the BCN sites are beautiful and you want to maintain um, a, yes. a positive image forward, but want to remain small. Like it's going to stay a side hustle forever because you don't want to quit your job or, uh, or you don't want to scale to infinity. BCN will work. work bro, great. I did 500K in my BCN site last year. Right. But as soon as you want to start to take over the world, you need to have the flexibility <laughs> of IO to where, and that's what I say. I'm like, if you, if oh. this is something different for you, where you want to scale and grow, right. take over everything, and and this is something that you're really going to put your I all your eggs into, IO makes a lot more sense because you you have full control of everything. You can change anything yourself at a heartbeat. I would disagree a little bit with it. So it's more of like I wouldn't say it's about taking over the world. To be clear, I have a couple licenship opportunities that we're creating. I'm probably going to be using one or two BCN for at least one or two of those because I don't want these people to like, I want it to be easy for them. I right. want it to be scalable and I want it to be simple. They don't need a million freaking reporting tools and their own custom reporting on each and every single little item and tweaked out that way. Which they is, which is the point that I'm making, which yeah, is, yeah. Like, I, I you, agree with you. If you want to custom do it yourself and create your own empire, that's specifically yourself. I, uh, yeah. IO is the one to do it. It's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot more time constraint. It all depends on what you're trying to do. It's not, there's no right and wrong answer. I don't want to put any bad light on BCN or make IO even seem too complicated it really comes down to what your strengths are and what you're trying to actually do with your company personally, not just money wise. Um, That's, and that's, and I, and I I will say, for example, too, if you are trying to take over the world and do a shit ton of crazy different items in a bunch of different ways, then it would definitely be IO. Yeah. Um, That's, and that's kind of what I tell people where it's like, yeah, if, if, if you want a, a nice side hustle with a dope looking website, like I like all the guys at BCN and I like their their websites, but then um, I've I've started doing so I've started kind of trading consulting for video editing 
uh, with with Jake. That he made J shout out to Jake. He made the the banner for all of this. He, he's and he's now editing my videos. And so I traded uh, consulting, and, and so I got on a, a call with him and his brother who co owned the business. And you know they're talking through and all their questions. I'm answering all their questions. I'm giving a whole bunch of shit that they need to go do and, and kind of optimize. And then I was like, all right, before we get off the call, like, let me pull up your website. It's a BCN website. And so then I said, you need to change this. 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 I'm like, but I know I'm talking to, I know everything I'm making is a moot point because I know you can't change anything. Like at the top of the thing, it says bounce house higher, bounce castle higher. I'm like, that doesn't mean anything. That only means that is the verbiage in England. You need to change that to where it says bounce house rental because your H1 header is literally the wrong keyword, but there's no way to change it. <coughs> there so is you, ways to change it. They just like some of the people, it takes time. You have to actually call them and ask them. You have to put in a, in a request. Right. And sometimes if you do that shit during a busy season, this is regardless who you use. I don't care what it is. You got to be on these freaking people sometimes. It yep. just, it is what it is. Like, you know what I mean? It's just as simple as that. Oh, you sent a ticket with three different questions. Two of them got answered. That one's probably just going to be lost in the ether. Yep. You might as well just resend it through. Um, yeah. And that's like, like when I communicate with IO, like I'm very pointed. Like I literally send an email, right? Because I've, I've yep. uh, I'm busy, right? So I'm not trying to change my website right fucking now. Like I'm cool. It's going to take five days and 12 emails. Like that's, I, I'm totally fine with that. Like I get yep. it. And so I send an email. I need to change the pricing to this. It's and I'm very specific because they're not entrepreneurs on the other side of the email. They're not business owners. They're not bounce house operators. And if you can't they're get coders. Sometimes call them. If you're not if the email shit don't work, then call. Yeah, and that's and that's but but that's kind of what it comes down to. Where it's like the BCN site will do wonders for you. It'll be great. It'll look awesome. But if you want to build something huge or or have aspirations to do so, you need to have the flexibility. You need to have inflatable office at that point. What um it says what aspect of tents changed specifically for you? So the way I do my tents, they're one like a twenty. The the there's a bunch of different style poles. All the legs for a ten by ten up to a ten twenty by forty is the same fucking leg. All of the 10 foot sections, because everything it goes by 10 foot sections, all the perimeter poles are called perimeters in the in the industry. We're all in the industry. Um, the perimeter poles are all the same length. They're versatile. So the corners are all the same. Some take they all take every tent takes four fucking corners. Some of them have more intermediates than others in different areas. And then there's different rafter poles, etc. So there's there's some different ones, but the rafter poles for a 20 wide tent are all the same. The rafters for all the 10 wide tents are all the same from a 10 by 10 all the way to a 10 by 50. From a 20 by 20 all the way to a 20 by 80. There's redundancy, re repetitiveness in the poles. So a 20 by 20, you use the same amount of poles as you would a 20 by 40, but a couple more. So the only difference is I could, I could like, if I have a shit ton of poles and stuff like that, and I have 10, 20 by 40 tops and I have five, 20, 20 by 20 or 10 or 10, 20 by 20 tops and five, 20 by 40 tops. And I only had enough poles to do one or the other. Every time I take a 10 by 20 out or a 20 by 40 out, I lose two 20 by 20s mm -hmm. because of the poles, not because of the tops. And you're, you're sharing inventory items to create things. And BCN had some trouble with that on the scale when it comes to tents. I probably could have made it work if I wanted to sit there forever and do it or shoehorn it in there. The do, taking on that project and doing redoing the SEO and having the opportunity to be able to work with IO more closely, I chose to do it that way. And I do believe in BCN fully. That's why I do have all my foam still through BCN, and I'm going to be doing my uh, 
my golf through BCN as well. So every time somebody wants to do a quote in IO and they actually book something, I'm getting an automation where it puts an email in my salesperson's shit and they have to go into BCN now and book it and make sure it's not, it makes sure it's reserved from the online booking on that platform. There's one extra step with an automation. I narrowed it down to make it as, as less complicated as I possibly could and it allows me to work with two brands that I think you can take over the world with both brands, <laughs> but it really depends on what way you're trying to do it. Right. Yeah. I've got, I mean, I've got no, I got no bad blood at all with BCN. Oh, yeah, whatsoever. Great yeah. Great people. So, all right, brother. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to end this puppy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to end this puppy. I've been, I've been rocking for two hours straight, mostly solo. So <laughs> you want to, you want to plug before you go? Plug party knowledge.com party rental knowledge.com go check it out peeps and then uh yeah jimmy eric too he's he's when you see my new io site when it comes out he's the one that did the io site and then we did a a foam party site for cosmic foam parties if you want to check that out that should be live today or tomorrow or something like that right um, on dude and then we're selling we can do a cloned foam party site for bcn and we're looking at our next client for io shortly so We'll be able to give your like give your whole back end done too. This is something that nobody actually does in the industry so far is uh having a fully built back end as well as the front end. So they'll build you your front end of the website, but they'll actually go in and add your products in. We can do that for you and have everything linked. Um I basically built it once and cloned it so you know, I won't have to do it again. That's um, cool, dude. That's super cool. Yeah, uh, I got I, nerdy with it. So <laughs> one thing that we're we're offering that nobody else is actually doing is is part like most of that set like templated setup. Um you can go in there and tweak it or whatever, but we got we got some stuff done for you ourselves. That's what's up. Cool. All right. Well, bro, I appreciate you popping on real quick. Uh today was a a, a kind of an experimental episode. So <laughs> I like I like experimenting. Any questions, let us know. We're always here for you. And uh, like and subscribe to his channel and hit me up too. If you need All right. Thanks, brother. Peace. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was a good episode. I wanted to kind of test out and see what would happen if I went solo uh, and talked a whole bunch and then brought a couple surprise guests on. So thanks to Bridget from Jump Orange. If you guys are in the area tomorrow, go check out that in Orlando. No, I'm not going to be there. I'm super bummed about it. But I can't complain too much because I'm going to Hawaii the next day for uh, eight days. So that's going to be badass. Um, and then uh, obviously thanks to Justin for popping on too. So go check him out at PartyRentalKnowledge.com. We'll be back uh, in two weeks. There is no booze and biz next week because I'll be on. Uh, I always make the joke I'm not on vacation. I'm just out of town to my guys because I want to be able to get a hold of me. Uh, I'm a workaholic uh self self uh self-inflicted wound i guess but uh so there'll be no booze and biz next thursday but i'll be back thursday after that um and then i'm trying to go live every single freaking day so i have wednesday figured out uh that's the stay lit podcast with uh matt from big and bright inflatables he's the co-owner with me in uh our christmas side distribution business which is called let's get lit supply so we do stay lit podcast on wednesday booze and biz on thursday and then tomorrow I'll be live at some point in time in the morning with Mike Bissell. We do a new show I just invented called Friday with Friends. So basically I send out a link to a whole bunch of people. Uh, they make cameos on the screen. And then Mike is the uh, president of Bounce House Atlanta. So he runs like their operations of at Bounce House Atlanta. So multi, multi, multi million dollar business. Uh, so we do some Q&A on Friday for Friday with friends. I don't have a live from Monday or Tuesday yet. I'm still working on that. But you guys are awesome. You guys are wonderful. So uh, I will see you tomorrow morning for Friday with friends. Thanks for stopping by. You guys are awesome. Love you. I'm going to end the stream now.